Welcome to Evanston, just north of Chicago, as Northwestern gets ready to take on Wisconsin. Two of the best runners in the country, Brian Calhoun for the Badgers and true freshman Tyrell Sutton, Northwestern and Wisconsin right now. Welcome to Evanston. Northwestern getting ready to take on Wisconsin. The Badgers, one of 12 remaining unbeaten teams in the country. Northwestern coming off a bye week. They lost in heartbreaking fashion two weeks ago here to Penn State. Of course, they're taking on Ohio State today. The weather in Evanston, it is overcast, but at least no rain is in the forecast. Temperatures about 54 degrees with the winds whipping up around 10 to 20 miles an hour as we are just off the shore of Lake Michigan. And we welcome you to Evanston. Pam Moore joined by David Nori. And we, we think Wisconsin football through the years, David, it is the running game. They have Brian Calhoun now, a terrific running back, but really Last week against Indiana, it was John Stocko in the passing game. Yeah, well, typically with Wisconsin, to beat Wisconsin, you think stop that power running game. But defensive coordinators are finding out it's not quite that simple. Last week, John Stocko, the Badger quarterback, showed that he was capable of opening things up. Two early touchdown passes to Brandon Williams. He has big-time playmakers on the outside. Jonathan Orr at the flanker position. And Wisconsin has proven that they can go up top if you're going to load up the box. This is a very talented team offensively. Now, Northwestern known for its spread offense, and they have a fifth-year senior named Brett Bazinet, who really runs it to perfection. Well, Brett Bazinet had this team in position to beat Penn State two weeks ago. They had a week off. Bazinet's hitting over 63% of his balls. I really think it's going to be his decisions, not only passing the football, but also pulling the ball down, selectively running the football in this game that could could make the difference. Northwestern has a shot to beat this Wisconsin team. Randy Walker now in his seventh season at Northwestern, the sixth year in which they have run this spread offense. And Barry Alve Alvarez, could this be a magical 16th and final season for him? He will stay on as the athletic director, but will step down as the head coach when this season is over. And Wisconsin gets the football. First short kickoff is taken by Zach Hampton. And Wisconsin will start in very good field position around the 32-yard line as that short kickoff did not quite pay off for Northwestern. So Wisconsin gets the ball first. John Stocko, the second-year starter at quarterback. And again, three touchdown passes last week against Indiana. That was a career-high tying mark for him. Yeah, two weeks ago, he looked very shaky against Michigan. But the Wolverines can make you look that way on offense. And Stocko really answered the bell last week. Indiana going eight men up on the line of scrimmage, and he made all the plays in the passing game for the Badgers. And Brian Calhoun, number two in the backfield, the transfer from Colorado. We have the numbers three and four rushers in the country. And there's Calhoun trying to bounce it out to the left side and picks up a couple of yards. The Nivea for men starting lineups on the Wisconsin offensive side. Jonathan Orn, Brandon Williams both had over 100 yards receiving last week in that win over Indiana. And again, Brian Calhoun averaging 145 yards a game. Badgers love to run the left side of that offensive line. Matt Lawrence and Joe Thomas man it. Donovan Rayola has been really the bedrock at center for several seasons now, the senior from Honolulu. Second and eight for Wisconsin. And once again, they give it to Calhoun, and he's able to slip one tackle. And it's going to be about six yards short of the first down. The Nivea for men Northwestern defensive lineups. Their defense third to last overall in the entire country. True freshman John Gill starts his second game of the season at defensive tackle. The linebackers, the strength of this unit. Leading tackler Tim McGargle has more than twice as many stops as the number two tackler. As we take a look at Marquise Cole, a dangerous return man on special teams, he also has two of Northwestern's five interceptions on the season. Third and six for the Badgers, their very first possession. Cadella blitzes Stocko. Plenty of real estate in front of him, and he will pick up the first down. So Northwestern came with the blitz on third down, and Stocko able to pick up nine. Well, Stocko is a very disciplined quarterback in the pocket, and you figure that playing for Barry Alvarez. And he feels a little seam right up the gut. Doesn't have a lot to see down the field in terms of open receivers. A nice decision to move the chains early for Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin second in the Big Ten in time of possession, averaging about 34 minutes a game, something you would expect from a team that has a great runner like Brian Calhoun. First and 10, Brandon Williams coming around and gets it on the reverse, but the defense, that's Tim McGargle, a fantastic middle linebacker, able to make the stop after a couple of yards of uh, a gain for, Cal for uh, Williams. Now let's go down to the third member of our team, Jimmy Dykes. Thank you, Pam. Talking to Northwestern's coaches before the ball game, they feel like Wisconsin is a team, yes, they can throw the ball, but they still, they want to run it. Then they want to run it. And as a changeup, they're going to run it at you, and they're not afraid to tell you where they're going to run the football. Pay attention today to Wisconsin's tight end, especially number 84, Jason Posiak. Northwestern feels like a lot of times he's a guy, wherever he lines up or wherever he motions to, Wisconsin's telling you that's where we're coming with the ball. Are you big enough to stop it? And that has always been the eternal question. Another running play to Calhoun, and he waits patiently and finds a little bit of a seam and gets him into Northwestern territory. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, picking up on where Jimmy Dykes left off there. That is the attitude of this football team. I mean, Barry Alvarez, both offensively and defensively, they want to bully you up front. They want to say, hey, we're better than you are, man for man, down in the pit. And this offensive line, he was not real excited about their play last week. They did not play well in the running game. Up front, they were not getting much push against Indiana. You know Barry Alvarez made his points to this offensive line during the week of practice. He was pretty grumpy after that 41-24 win. Third and three. They converted on their first third down and can't this time as Calhoun had one go off his fingertips as... Brendan Smith, the true freshman from Andover, Massachusetts, was in on the coverage. And we will get our first look at one of the best punters in the country, Ken DeBush, and the best punt returner in the country, Marquise Cole, leads the entire NCAA Division 1A at 30.1 yards per return. Of course, Brendan Williams is a terrific returner on the other side for Wisconsin. to Bush, his strength, the hang time, and it will be stopped short. The ball hit and then just died around the one-yard line. Zach Hampton able to cover up, and Northwestern will take over on its one. Now the Badgers special teams across the board are loaded with stars, and DeBush is one of the most talented punters in the country. He has been uncanny. Punts inside the 20, directional punting, and that's a heck of a play by Hampton to prevent that ball from getting over the goal line. And that is the 11th time DeBush has been able to nail one inside the 20. And he can also boom them, but he's terrific, as you just saw, at getting touch on the ball. So Northwestern has 99 yards in front of him. Tyrell Sutton, the true freshman running sensation, able to give him a little bit of breathing room as he takes it out to the six. And Brett Bazinet, again, the fifth-year senior running this offense, starting since he was a redshirt freshman and really has evolved over the years to be a great leader. Well, and, and we found that out a year ago, the upset against Ohio State. He's been a very capable player over his four years at Northwestern. I really believe he has to have one of his better games at Northwestern to beat Wisconsin this afternoon. Played in that Ohio State with a separated throwing shoulder. Sutton again, but this time he is bottled up by big Nick Hayden, one of the defensive tackles. As we take a look now at the Nivea for men starting lineups. The Northwestern skill players, we already talked about Tyrell Sutton, 132 yards a game on the ground, best for all freshmen in the entire nation. Sean Herbert leads the Cats with 28 catches. Fourth-year starter, Zach Street, the right tackle, big at 6'7", 335. Also a huge influence on the other offensive linemen, all of them first-year starters. Third and four, Bazinet on the roll, and he cannot find his target as he was going for Jonathan Fields. And a three and out for Northwestern. And should be good field position coming up for the Badgers. And Bazinet chose to be conservative with the placement of that ball. You don't want to make a mistake down under the shadow of your own goal post. Both teams coming out early in this game trying to establish a run. Shocking for the Big Ten, Pam. <laughs> yeah. And Brandon Williams ran one back for a touchdown last week against Indiana. A 63-yarder also took one of the house against Temple. That's a line driver. Plays right into the hands of Williams' strength. 
And he is able to take it down to the 31-yard line. That's a 40-yard punt and a 16-yard return of Ryan Peterson's punt. And boy, Wisconsin also a team that depends so heavily on field position. And so far, they're really winning that battle. Well, Pam, you know, you're, you're so right. It, Barry Alvarez talks about the hidden yards and special teams, and his special teams have been tremendous throughout the course of this year. And you look back at his last two Rose Bowl teams in the late 90s, very similar. They had great special teams play. And you see the possession and position. We will be keeping track of that. Their field position right now. How about starting out on the 31-yard line? Brian Calhoun running left as usual. And he will take it very close to the first down marker as he is induced to go out of bounds by Tim McGargle. Well, this is a big zone blocking running attack. It's not man on man blocking. This offensive front for the Badgers comes off in unison and you watch them on tape and you realize two things. Number one, they're very much left handed. They love to run to the left and also Calhoun as the tailback, not very comfortable running between the tackles. He loves to bounce it outside and use his speed. And they will measure for the first down. Calhoun, actually, they're not going to measure. They're going to go ahead and say it's a first down. Calhoun transferred from Colorado where he played his first two years. Let's listen in. So a game clock issue. They're going to put a few more seconds back on it. That's Dan Capron, the referee today. Calhoun, his first couple of years at Colorado and then transferred to Wisconsin. He is from Oak Creek and was an All-American high school player. And, uh, of course, Colorado wanted to make him into a wide receiver. And Barry Alvarez obviously thrilled to get him in to Madison. First down from the 21, and it's Calhoun again. So the game plan is being established here. Well, and, and as we said, Alvarez not real happy about the run production a week ago against Indiana. And they're going to stick with it. Calhoun eventually went over 100 yards, but when Barry Alvarez is upset after posting 41 points with his offensive line, you know they're going to be they're going to be working on the run game throughout the course of the week in practice. In fact, he said his offense last week was sleepwalking. And he emphatically let them know that in practice this week. Second and seven, Calhoun caught from behind by Barry Cofield, the senior from Cleveland Heights, but he still picked up a couple of more yards. Wisconsin in the red zone has been lethal on the season as they are now facing a third and four coming into this game. 25 of 28 in the red zone and 22 touchdowns. That's an 89% wow. success rate. I tell you, that's lighting it up. Those are big time numbers when you get in scoring position. And now on third and four in the red zone. Stocko going up top, looking towards the end zone. He has a touchdown. Jonathan Orr scores and Wisconsin again successful in the red zone. Well, such a big part of the red zone success for the Badgers is Stocko abil Stocko's ability to hit inside routes. And working against Corey Dias, Jonathan Orr, he had success last week against Indiana on the post route. Six points for Wisconsin. Teller Melhoff puts through the extra point. Jonathan Orr had a huge game last week. Four catches for over 100 yards and a touchdown. He already has one score here, and Wisconsin breaks on top. John Stocko has thrown his eighth touchdown pass of the season, his fourth in two weeks, as he found Jonathan Orr for the score in a very short field as they started from the 31. And that again goes back to Ken Bush, the punter, the hidden yardage that Barry Alvarez talks about. Pin Northwestern on the one. They got a three and out. The ensuing punt, a short field, and they took full advantage. And Northwestern will take over from the 20, down seven to nothing. So the Wildcats at least have some breathing room starting from the 20, but Jonathan Orr and company have put them in a seven nothing hole in Evanston.
Unbeaten Wisconsin has broken out to a 7-0 lead over Northwestern as we join you from Evanston for the second time today. The Wildcats have the football. They're averaging 32 points per game with this offense. And that Bazinet pass is handled by Jonathan Field, who picks up seven. The Nivea for men's starting lineups, focusing on the nation's ninth best defense for Wisconsin. Matthew Shaughnessy making a big impact as a true freshman at defensive end. Dante Sanders and Mark Saluski are the Badgers' top two tacklers. Lamar Watkins joins them in the linebacking crew. And Johnny White elevating his play over the last couple of weeks in the secondary. He is starting today. Joe Stelmacher continuing to recover from the effects of a stinger. He suffered against Michigan a couple of weeks ago. Very close to the first down is Tyrell Sutton. And Brett Bielema in his second season as the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin in the air parent, he will take over as the head coach next year. Yeah, and when you talk Badgers, you know, they're very stubborn about running the ball, but they're also stubborn about stopping the run on defense. Yeah, this is one of the top 10 units in the country against the run. They like to play man-to-man -man on the outside with the free safety over the top. You're going to have to hit passes against the man-to-man -man coverage to have success. They go right back on third and short to Sutton, and he will pick up the first down. Northwestern's first first down, Jason Chapman and Johnny White coming in to make the stop, and Tyrell Sutton, a very special player, a true freshman from Akron, as Zach Streif puts his big old hands on his head, thanking him for getting the first down, but really playing because Brandon Roberson got hurt in the first game of the season, and he has just taken off. Well, he's a top freshman running back in the country, and you sit down and you visit with him, he's well beyond his years. At the coaching staff marvels at his maturity. He's only 18 years old, and the pass is complete to Mark Fillmore. Picks up eight yards as we check in with Reese Davis. All right, Reese, so Florida State trying to keep rolling right along in the ACC. Bazinet going to the left side and met immediately is Jonathan Fields as he was just engulfed. Mark Zalewski, maybe the best linebacker on this team coming up and just grabbing him. Well, well Zalewski really reacts well on this play. He's going to read it. He closes with the buff football in the air. And that's the way you shut down passes behind the line of scrimmage. Screens, you got to have the recognition. Zalewski, as you said, Pam, really the, the featured linebacker on this defense. A loss of two yards. That's the ninth tackle for loss for Zalewski this year, leading the Badger team. Bazinet with pressure from Shaughnessy coming up, and he tries to throw it away. It is almost intercepted. Brett Bell got to the football, but it hit the ground. And Bazinet is a guy who threw an interception in his last pass of the game against Penn State. Doesn't throw a lot of picks and uh, was a little fortunate there. Yeah, typically, Bazinet is very safe with the football, but also he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders against this Wisconsin defense. And the ball does hit the turf, but that is awfully close to an interception by Bell. Kim Thompson was his intended receiver. Peterson comes in, and this time a booming punt, and Brandon Williams muffs it. Has to pick it up in the end zone, and Williams, who's one of the best punt returners going, takes it out to the six. Penalty flags fly, but Peterson, a 60-yard punt. You see him. An illegal block, Peterson, that 60-yard punt ties his career high. And Wisconsin is backed up. Well, I'll tell you, Pam, Williams didn't have to bring that ball out of the end zone. Uh, he muffed the punt. The ball went back into the end zone. He could have gone to a knee and given the Badgers the ball out at the 20-yard line. Taking one last look at Williams. Trying to secure the football. He could have gone to a knee. Randy Walker looking on from the sidelines as his team trails Wisconsin by a touchdown. But Wisconsin 
with the clipping penalty that was ultimately called back at its three-yard line. And Williams' questionable decision to bring the ball out of the end zone. We'll talk about that more in a second. But first, Calhoun tries to get him out of trouble. And he might have picked up a yard. Let's go back to that punt. Brandon Williams again, a fabulous punt returner, but kind of messed up on this. Well, and he sees the football coming back into the field of play, and he decides to cover the football even in the end zone. On a muff, you don't have to do that. You can go to a knee. To be, but to be fair to it, Pam, you, know, you don't practice situations where you're fielding the ball inside the 10 typically. So Brandon Williams was being safe. It wasn't clear in his mind, and he was secure with the football. And absolutely, your first instinct has to be, my gosh, the ball is in the end zone. I got to get it out of there. And Williams is one of the best going at returning. Calhoun breaking it to the outside, gets up to the 10. Marquise Cole makes the stop at that seven more yards for Calhoun. Now, Wisconsin already, we've told you, they're 5-0 on the season, 2-0 in the Big Ten. This is their remaining schedule. And what you will see at the bottom, take note, they play neither Ohio State nor Michigan State. Yeah, and, and what a bon voyage party that would be for Barry Alvarez to win the Big Ten title. And some people are talking dark horse candidate for the national title game if they can run the table in the Big Ten. Take on a Minnesota team next week. Minnesota pummeled by Penn State last week. As Calhoun up that left side, breaks free, picks up the first down, and a whole lot more. Brian Calhoun steps out of bounds around the 31-yard line, but give him 20. Well, Calhoun opened up the season with big numbers in the first three games. The last two weeks against Michigan and Indiana, you know, the Wolverines and the Hoosiers had success keeping him between the tackles. And he's not real comfortable running inside. But if he gets outside, look out. I mean, he is always looking to flash his speed. And if he's running on the perimeter, it's going to be a long day for Northwestern. He takes a break. Booker Stanley checking in at tailback. Calhoun already half 100. Nine carries, 54 yards. And it's first down at the 31. Stocko with plenty of time and plenty of room. So he takes off and slides down around the 38-yard line. McGargle in there to put the finishing touches on the slide, but Stocko picks up about seven. Well, this Badger offense really puts you in a bind because, you know, as a defensive coordinator, you know that you don't want to come out and watch them dominate the line of scrimmage, control the ball all afternoon on the ground against you. You have to put numbers on the line of scrimmage. You have to take risks on the outside against talented receivers. And it's just a real tough task for a defense. Makes it even tougher when Stocko's making nice decisions to pull the football down and run with it. He did pick up seven, makes it second and three. Stanley's still in the backfield, and he gets the football. And using his legs to pick up another couple of, another yard is Barry Cofield. He got no gain on it, but Cofield looked like he had him stopped for a loss. As we join you from Ryan Field, the campus of Northwestern University, Pam Ward, David Norrie, and Jimmy Dykes joining you. Unbeaten Wisconsin taking on Northwestern and Brian Calhoun already with 54 yards on only nine carries. He's third in the country in rushing, averaging 145 yards a game. In Wisconsin coming out here, trying to establish ball control as Calhoun has checked back in and goes out in a pass pattern. But Stocko for the third time today Stocko takes off, off as Cofield drops him. Close to the first down. Let's go back to restate. So Virginia Tech off to that quick start against Marshall. And we will have a measurement here to determine if a first down was picked up. I think he's going to be just short on that scramble. John Stocko. Good eyes. That's six inches short of the first down. And on the road inside your own. 45-yard line, Barry Alvarez typically punts in this situation. Fourth and inches. And the offense is staying out there. Stocko coming back out. There are a lot of Wisconsin fans about two and a half hours from Madison, and the opposite side has more red than purple here. Yeah, I don't like this decision. You're up 7-0. You have three minutes, 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. 
And on your own 41 yard line. I think at, at best here, Pam, you try to draw Northwestern off sides. I think this is an early risk you don't need to take. So looking for a hard count here. Northwestern defense, seven for seven. Opponents have been against them on fourth down this season. They have not stopped anybody on fourth. Will Wisconsin snap the ball? They do. What a gamble, and Stocko gets it. So now opponents against Northwestern, eight for eight on the season on fourth down, including this risky one in uh, Wisconsin side of the football field. Yeah, I mean, the odds are you're going to pick up inches, whether it's third or fourth down, but not a typical decision for Barry Alvarez. I mean, he's a bit of a throwback. Yeah, the run game, the bruising physical style, the you know, Shem Beckler, Woody Hayes type approach, and they typically don't see Barry Alvarez go for a fourth and inches on his own 41. Rolls the dice and uh, it worked out. So now a first down from the 43. Stocko going up top. He has Calhoun open and he finds him. And Brian is able to stretch to the 46. McGargle again in on the tackle for Northwestern. And we're going to be saying his name a lot. Well, John Stocko is making some solid decisions early in this football game. He's pulled the ball down taking advantage of some openings and some creases in the defensive line and the pass rush, throwing some nice balls, and he's building on that great performance last week at home against Indiana. His 20 rushing yards already a career high for John Stocko. Second and seven. Calhoun again, testing. And failing the test as Barry Cofield comes up and slaps him down. Cofield. One of the seniors on this defensive unit that, again, is third last in the country, third worst in the country in total defense. Well, Luis Castillo went high in the NFL draft, a, a mate of Cofield's along that Northwestern defensive line. Cofield got off to a slow start this year in the first two games, but he's come on like gangbusters. He's really stepped up his game, and he's a load to handle man-to-man -man inside for an offensive lineman. In fact, he was terrific against Penn State two weeks ago. Three pass deflections, three quarterback hurries, a sack, and a forced fumble. And that was a great play on the elusive Calhoun. Stocko to Calhoun. And they completed as Calhoun was able to get separation from the gargle. And they pick up a first down. Oh, you love to see this from a running back. Yeah, you're a quarterback. You're under duress in the pocket. Watch Stocko. Again, he's going to slip outside, use his feet, and then he just drops the ball over McGargle's head. Yeah, the minute you see that linebacker turn his number on the back of his jersey to you, you know you can throw it out over his head. And that's a nice play by Calhoun to help out his quarterback. Calhoun showing you that he is a threat out of the backfield. He had 15 catches on the season coming in. He has two so far today. More Calhoun. Rayola making the block on John Gill, but it's still three more yards for Calhoun. ESPN's college. And that is a shot of a by high temple just north of the of where we are here in Evanston. Second and seven, Wisconsin driving the football. Now the 12th play of this drive. Stocko all the time in the world, and it's intercepted. Stocko. And Brendan Smith picks him off. And a good return as Stocko makes the mistake. First career pick for the true freshman. And Stocko got a little greedy. And this ball has a high level of difficulty to it. He's going to try to fit the ball into Jonathan Orr. And this is going to be a misfire. He's going to throw the ball wide to the outside. And how about Brendan Smith? And Northwestern, they lost Brian Hines, their strong safety, their experienced veteran. Strong safety has been a real problem spot for the Wildcats. Brendan Smith is coming on, and he makes a big play early. That was a 23-yard return on his first career pick. Bazinet pitching it out to Sutton, who will pick up about a yard in what should be the final play of the first quarter. So the big pick by Brendan Smith snuffs out that Wisconsin drive. And Northwestern down by a touchdown, trying to pull even as unbeaten Wisconsin broke out on top. Man.
Second quarter about to get underway. Wisconsin leading the Wildcats seven to nothing, but Northwestern, thanks to the interception by Brendan Smith, has the football back and near midfield. Brett Bazinet has a lot of time looking for Fillmore, and Fillmore was step for step with Alan Langford as that falls incomplete. Let's look now at our Napa game track. Jonathan Orr, 15-yard touchdown catch. Put Wisconsin up 7 to nothing. They had a very short field, and Brian Calhoun already with 56 yards in this game. But John Stocko, here's your mistake as he throws the pick to Brendan Smith, and that is led now to Northwestern's possession. Now a third and nine for Bazinet, and he has a man wide open. Sean Herbert, the leading receiver for the Wildcats, picks up the first down. We pick up his down. And three. Not very often you see somebody outrun anybody on Florida State. Look at Bazinet go, and he slides down, something they've been asking and imploring him to do for four years. 13 yards in the first down. Now we mentioned at the top, Bazinet is going to have to have one of his better games. Not just throwing the ball, but making nice decisions. This is a play called in the huddle. And a great job by Bazinet to pick up the first down. A nice crisp decision to go to the turf and move the chains. And we asked him yesterday, because he's not a fast guy, why he's such an effective runner. And he says, fear. <laughs> it's all about the fear, running away from the big guys. And he picks up a first down. A little play action. Bazinet looks left and finds his man Herbert again. And that should be another first down for the Wildcats. Well, that is an impressive job by Bazinet. You know, he checked the right side. He checked two or three receivers, came all the way back. And look at the ball control. He controlled the ball for two-thirds of the game against Penn State. And that, I mean, typically it's the Nittany Lions that are doing that to other clubs in the Big Ten when they're rolling like they are this year. This Northwestern offense is capable with their mix of run and pass. They still lost that game. Remember, they had to settle for five field goals. And there's a the reverse. Fillmore trying to come around, and Matthew Shaughnessy makes him reverse field. And Fillmore, as the flags come down, about six of them. Dantes Sanders finally is able to track down Fillmore, who tried every which way he could and was still snuffed out. And Randy Walker is the kind of coach who likes to throw some razzle-dazzle into his offense. That's going to be a clip on Aaron Cobb, number 44. The big tight end for Northwestern. And tight ends don't get a lot of opportunities to play for the Wildcats. And here's the handoff. Bazinet trying to get into the feet of big Matthew Shaughnessy. And let's freeze it right here. Big Aaron Cobb is going to get caught for a pretty flagrant clip in the backfield. And that didn't show much discipline. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. You know, and that's a mistake, Pam, from your tight end that is very critical. Uh, you're, you're down seven points. You're playing against an undefeated team. Maybe the team in the driver's seat to win the Big Ten. And you can't afford those types of penalties. I mean, three officials were, all, were on top of that clip. Not a tough one to call. And it was a busted play anyway. They were going to lose ground, but the clipping just exacerbated it as Sutton flares out of the backfield. And Tyrell got nothing. Johnny White, the junior from Portland, Texas. Lamar Watkins in on the tackle. Let's go back to our possession and position graphic. In Wisconsin, 11-11, all in the first quarter. And their average start was very much helped. Remember, they started their touchdown drive on their 31. And were backed up to around the three because of a Brandon Williams not able to not being able to handle a punt correctly, so they sort of cancel each other out. Second and 25 for Northwestern. Bazinet has a man on the side, but decides to go downfield, and that should be a first down to Mark Fillmore. 
And again, you see the decision process that Bazinet goes through. Yeah, those people out there that say Bazinet doesn't have a talented throwing arm, that he dinks and dunks and gets the ball out on time, you know, smart guy in the field. Check out this play. He feels a little space to his right, and then he snaps that ball off down inside the 10. That is a big-time throw from Bazinet. That's a 27-yard gain. And it's now first and goal from the six for the Wildcats as they were really backed up. Sutton gets it down to the four-yard line. And on that last play, he had Sutton coming out of the backfield, a couple of choices, but was patient and waited for the man to come open, and he got the first and goal. Yeah, I mean, we have two running backs this afternoon. You got Calhoun for Wisconsin. He likes to bounce it outside, but Sutton, the true freshman, He's comfortable running the ball inside, and he's not afraid to lay the shoulder pads and helmet on linebackers. Now second and goal. Bazinet keeps it, and it's a touchdown. Brett Bazinet just sneaks it into the end zone, and Northwestern has scored. Yeah, this might be a review opportunity for this Big Ten officiating crew, but again, Bazinet, decision-making. I'm not sure he quite got to the goal line there. Tough to see there from that angle, but what a play, what an effort from the senior quarterback. Stretching that ball forward, and they are going to look at it. The previous play is being reviewed. We've talked about this, you know, throughout the year, Pam, that the Big Ten officiating crews and review crews upstairs have done a, a heck of a job. You know, Bazinet might have just gotten a piece of that goal line. All you have to do is just break the plane with the football. But getting back to the review crews, they've done a super job, and I think this has been a great addition to college football. And remember, you got to have indisputable evidence to, revere, to reverse a call. And tough from those angles to really see clearly that he did not score. Dan Capron is on the phone with Dick Honig upstairs, the technical advisor. He's going to take a look at it. The commuter, communicator, Tom Quinn, the replay technician, Joe Hall. And of course, it, it has worked wonderfully. James Delaney, the commissioner, putting it into effect last season. And uh, just about every, every other conference has copied it. Boy, looks from that angle like there was some green between the ball and the goal line. Tough to tell from that angle, but from that end zone angle, if we can take one more look at that end zone angle. After review, the call stands as all down the field. Touchdown. And, and, and even though he might not have broken the plane, and the Big Ten crew upstairs stuck with the ruling, the strict ruling, and that is you have to have indisputable evidence. And I don't think you had indisputable evidence to reverse that call. Nice job. So give Bazinet credit for the touchdown run, his second of the season. Joel Howells, the reigning, a couple of weeks ago, the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week for his performance against Penn State. But Brett Bazinet again, making terrific decisions in the passing game and then punching it in for the game-time touchdown. See some of the white caps there on Lake Michigan. The wind whipping up a little bit here in Evanston. And Brett Bazinet with a four yard touchdown run. He had a huge 27 yard pass to Mark Fillmore in a second and 25. Probably chatting about that right now on the sidelines. Yeah, in the red zone. He get moved back on the clipping call, and that was a huge play. Bazinet's going to have to make those plays to beat Wisconsin this afternoon. And a short kick that is fair caught. Daiwan Rowan gets it. They're going to start about the 28 as we go back to Reese Davis. Virginia Tech trying to hang in there as one of the unbeatens, but Marshall has tied that up. And again, that kickoff there, trying to keep it out of the hands of all the dangerous return men, Brandon Williams. But consequently, it's a 29. They start from the 29. Does Wisconsin. Stocko takes off again and will pick up five yards. Let's head down to Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Pam, talking to Brett Bielema, the Wisconsin defensive coordinator before the ball game, he said the problem with Northwestern's offense is they are 
are not predictable. They run the same running play out of the same pass plays, pre-game snap or pre-snap set. He said the other thing about Northwestern is they keep you out of a rhythm. The reason why Brett Bazna, he feels like in the Big Ten, as good as there is, of manufacturing and managing a ball game. And that's exactly what we saw in that last drive out of Northwestern. Both Bielema and head coach Barry Alvarez singling out Bazinet is the reason why this offense works so well. Calhoun picks up three to the 38-yard line. McGargle in again on another tackle because they, they played Indiana last week, did Wisconsin, and, and Bielema talked about almost like it was a double week of preparation. Terry Hepner was at Miami uh, under Randy Walker and then took over at Miami of Ohio. So the offenses are similar. We asked him what was the main difference if it was the weapons involved. He said, no, it's Brett Bazinet. Well, and, and Barry Alvarez, you know, the Badger head coach, he says it's all about the quarterback. You know, and he'd say, what? Talk to us about the Northwestern offense. And he says, hey, it's all about the quarterback. And it really is. Third and one for Wisconsin. Booker Stanley will pick up the first down as McGargle came over and gave him a nice hit. But Stanley able to pick up another first down for the Badgers. Now on this big offensive line for Wisconsin, they just come off like a dance team. Five in unison, the zone blocking schemes. And look at everybody picking up a blue jersey. I mean, that is the kind of mauling style, physical style inside that's, you know, so typical of this Wisconsin running game. Saw a great pull there by the left guard, Matt Lawrence. Starting finally as a senior out of Sussex Central High School in Millsboro, Delaware. Not a lot of Delawareans making it to 1A. And there is the always dangerous Brandon Williams picking up a first down. Gets 18. Brandon's first catch of the day. He was magical last weekend against Indiana. Well, and Joe Thomas is really the star on this offensive line. Watch number 72. He's going to get outside. They're going to release him outside. Get that block. The big guy has the running ability and the athleticism to get outside and get a block for a wide receiver. Big time town. Thomas 6'8", 303 on the Lombardi watch list, one of the best in the country. And another first down for the Badgers. McGargle trying to come in and get into Stocko. So Tim McGargle, the senior from Chicago, busted that play up. Yeah, it looked like he beat Urbic. I mean, this is McGargle. McGargle has been frustrated. I mean, no secret, this defense has given up a lot of yards, but he's just going to come off the edge, and he flat out beats the right tackle, Urbic. McGargle, one of the top tacklers in the country a year ago for Northwestern, and just starting to reach his stride. This linebacking core for Northwest. Actually, he was number one in the entire country in solo tackles last year, third in total. That is his first sack of the season. Stocko goes against the grain to Calhoun. And Calhoun makes a couple of guys miss, takes it down to the 37 yard line as we go back for another update with Reese Davis. Thank you, Reese. Wait next week, traveling to BC to take on the Eagles and Chestnut hill and down now to florida state third and six wisconsin has converted five of seven so far today against this northwestern defense plenty of time for stocko he decides to go to calhoun and mcgargo can't quite run him down another first down for wisconsin well, this has to be frustrating for a defense the northwestern is only going to rush three and mcgargo Locked up man to man, man on Calhoun. And Stocko, the quarterback, found the mismatch. And Calhoun, too much speed for a middle linebacker to be watching out in the flat man to man. See his numbers already with 15 touches, 56 yards on the ground for Calhoun, averaging 145 a game. Calhoun gets it, Roof on the left side, but a tackle by John Gill, the true freshman, was able to twist around quickly and stop Calhoun. That's six yards for Brian, but a good play by Gill to stop him right there. Now we mentioned Northwestern lost a very high NFL draft pick in Luis Castillo over a year ago. And, you know, they got some true freshmen playing up front. And Wooten is digged. John Gill has stepped in. Randy Walker. Says that Gill reminds him quite a bit of Castillo as a youngster. And that is quite a compliment. And Gill is a true freshman. Calhoun a 
again, able to get away from Nick Roach's tackle. But just scooches inside the 20, picks up a couple more. And you get a feel for Calhoun's quickness and his lateral ability. And Nick Roach is one of the you know, athletes that really stands out. That linebacker in the Big Ten. Calhoun just sidestepped him in the backfield to pick up some positive yardage. In fact, Nick Roach, according to Randy Walker, is going to be playing in the National Football League someday. And I reiterate that Wisconsin has been fabulous inside the red zone this season. They're one for one today. Another third down, third and two. Calhoun needs two and gets three. They keep the ball and the chains moving. And you, you'd have to know that this warms Barry Alvarez's heart. Uh, his legacy, three Rose Bowl wins at Wisconsin. They're bringing back a program from the brink. Remember, this this Wisconsin team, Pam, had only won one bowl game before Alvarez picked up that, that first Rose Bowl win back in the early 90s. And yeah, he loves to see his team moving the ball with rhythm in the running game and the big heavies up front having their way. And Calhoun has carried the load 68 yards so far. First and 10 from the 15. Booker Stanley's turned around the ball, and he is upended. Close to another first down at the five. And Stanley, no slouch himself running the football, showed it on that carry. Well, you look at Brian Calhoun, and he's not the typical Badger running back that Alvarez would like to see in his backfield. When you talk about his physical stature, I mean, he's a smaller speed back, but Booker Stanley he fits the mold. You know, you think Ron Dane and guys like Moss and Fletcher. And, of course, they've had some speed backs as well along the way, Anthony Davis and Michael Bennett. But uh, Badgers like to go with that physical running style. Five career 100-yard games for Booker, including 103 yards against Bowling Green in the season opener. First and goal from the five, Stanley again gets the block from Bill Redmeister, his fullback, and takes it in for the Badger touchdown. Northwestern seven. So you take out Calhoun and big Booker Stanley at 215 pounds. Gets his second rushing touchdown of the season. Again, Redmeister, one of the fullbacks pulling in for Matt Bernstein, who continues to be out and will be out indefinitely with an injury. Another impressive drive for the Badgers, two for two in the red zone today, both touchdowns as Melhoff adds the extra point. So you give Brian Calhoun a break, and bring in Booker Stanley. The Badgers remain perfect in the red zone. Booker Stanley talking to the big guys in front of him, his offensive line, who helped him get a five-yard touchdown run, capping off a 12-play, 71-yard drive. Kind of a typical Badger scoring drive. Brian Calhoun in the mix, both running and catching the ball, but it was Stanley who capped it off. They converted three third downs on that drive. Brandon Roberson back from an injury that he's suffered on opening day. Robertson breaks free. He is finally pursued and taken down at the 20 by DeAndre Levy. But the flag is way back at the 28-yard line of Northwestern. An 80-yard return, but it probably won't hold up. And it won't. A big part of Wisconsin's success is they don't beat themselves. And they play solid in the special teams. But Barry Alvarez's teams like to make you make mistakes. And they like to let you beat yourself. And that was a big return by Roberson. Huge play to get Northwestern right back in this football Little game. Block in the back. Number 27 on the return team. The penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Reggie McPherson uh, with the uh, penalty. Let's go back to Reese Davis. Reese. 
All right, Pam, game four of the American League Championship Series between the Yankees and Angels has been rained out. They'll play Sunday night, 7.35 Eastern time, with the Angels trying to finish the series. It's college football Saturday. I know you're going to be watching anyway, but if you thought maybe you'd pick at the baseball game, just stay with us. We've got Iowa and Purdue. That's after college game day scoreboard this afternoon. Yeah, Pam, baseball can wait. Uh, it's baseball. Saturday. They still playing baseball? This is college football day. Home for about three inches of rain in New York today. No surprise that it was rained out as that pass perilously thrown towards Sean Herbert and falls incomplete. Let's check out today's AFLAC trivia question. Ten years ago, Northwestern won the Big Ten and therefore went to the Rose Bowl. We want to know who is the only player from that team who is still playing actively in the National Football League. I'm going to take just a quick crack at it. I think maybe Dwayne Bates. That's a quick answer for me. Yeah, you know, I, I keep the right to <laughs> you know, retract that statement. Second down throw complete to Jonathan Fields as he will be stopped about three yards short of the first down. Mark Zalewski, a linebacker, coming in to make the stop. That's the third catch of the day for Fields. Brett Bielema will be in charge next year at Wisconsin. Spent some time at Kansas State as an assistant. A lot of guys with Iowa roots. Bielema played at Iowa and also coached under legendary Hayden Fry. Third and one. Flags are down and this play is a no-go. Sutton was flaring out of the backfield. Yeah, and Sutton moved early just before Third the snap. Full start. Number 19. Still third down. And you know, Pam, Sutton has had tremendous success as a true freshman running the football. And he's really the top freshman back in the country, in my mind. And it certainly has the best numbers. But what has really surprised this Northwestern staff is his ability to block, his ability to pick up the offense in the preseason camp. Really a rare mistake by Sutton. And Randy Walker marvels at the way Sutton has played as though he's a third or fourth year player mentally on this football team. Very mature is Sutton. That's the word we hear over and over again from the coaches. Bazinet now able to pick up the first down. So they push back on third and six and Sean Herbert comes up with the grab. His third of the day. Well, Bazinet shows a lot of nerve in his own end trying to fit this ball in. I mean, that is a tight window and a super throw by Bazinet. You not only have to use accuracy on that throw, but you have to have perfect timing. And Bazinet has been up to the task so far in this football game against the Badgers. Herbert has led Northwestern in catches in all four games this season. On his way again today, Bazinet with time. And he completes it past midfield. Catch is made by Sam. It is caught by Sam Cheatham, a sophomore wide receiver from San Leandro, California. Yeah, and on paper, Cheatham didn't figure to play a big part in this football game. But I'll tell you, Bazinet, if he keeps on making these kinds of throws, you know, and down the stretch in the Big Ten Conference, there are going to be some NFL scouts that are going to want to take a look at him. Uh, he checked again two or three receivers vertically and came off to Cheetah. Picking up over 30 yards, and that one is just thrown over the outstretched hands of six foot three Ross Lane. Boy, Ross Lane, another big wide receiver. Wildcats have a lot of depth at that position. Flag on the play. Bazinet missed an opportunity on that throw. That would have been back to back big plays in the passing game. Holding, number 63 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. As a result of the holding. And that's a very talented right tackle, Zach Streif. Bring up first and 20. Streif, really the uh, taking over as a great leader on this team with his, the other four starters, all first-year starters. He's been starting since he was a redshirt freshman and says he's personally responsible or feels that way for Bazinet's health. Remember, this Wildcat offensive line lost three starters to the NFL. Nick Hayden coming up early from his defensive tackle spot. We'll see if he was drawn off. 
Prior to the snap. Offside. Defense number 96. Still first down. So they give the five yards right back. Let's go down to Jimmy Dykes. Pam, you're talking about that Wisconsin staff having some Iowa ties. Well, none of them have any tighter ties than Brett Bielema, next year's head coach. How about this? He actually has an Iowa Hawkeye tattoo on his left leg. I asked him if he has any plans to remove it, and he says no, and I'll tell you why after this play. He says, to quote former President Thomas Jefferson, who said, I never met a successful man who isn't proud of where he came from. It's a great quote to hold on to for Brett uh, Bielema, but a Hawkeye tattoo on a Badger, it just doesn't seem right, you know? Yeah, but that Thomas Jefferson quote doesn't play well in Madison, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, you know, after a year or two, that tattoo may come off. Well, I'm sure he's not going to show it visibly you know he'll have it covered up with socks or pants or a bandage or something but or uh, laser surgery something yeah that would be permanent right off of Bazinet's foot as he was not expecting the Austin Matthews snap and a big mistake for Northwestern Kurt Ware covers up as Northwestern gives the ball away yeah, and there was nothing that Bazinet could have done on this play this is a huge mistake by Austin Matthews execution between a center and a quarterback you cannot make mistakes like that if you're going to beat an undefeated wisconsin team wisconsin takes the ball over in northwestern territory at the 47 on a very ugly drive for northwestern as you see the possession position update Wisconsin for the second time today starting in Northwestern territory in that last Northwestern possession three penalties including one on the long kickoff return that negated it and it ends with a fumble there's a fumble but Stocko able to cover up but he's going to lose quite a bit of yardage. Barry Alvarez dismayed by their sloppy play last week. Well and we talked about execution between a center and a quarterback. A big part of the execution and play for a quarterback is the handoff, and that was not a good mesh between Calhoun and Stocco. The Badgers lucky to get the football back. So now they are back in their own territory as they lose five, second and 15. Stocco zips it out to Williams. Williams gets a terrific block and steps out of bounds. Oh, my. That was again number 72 with the block that sprang Williams for a 23 yard gain. Now, there are a couple cornerbacks on the field that are not going to want to play much longer in this football game if Joe Thomas keeps releasing free on the outside. Let's see if we can get a freeze on contact right there. I mean look at the play here. That's what you're looking at as a cornerback against Joe Thomas releasing as a tackle. And Brandon Williams just slipping with that left foot, stepping on the sideline, or he might have been gone for six. Yep, it was a slip that got him out of bounds as he planted. First and ten. And Williams is looking to throw. Goes towards Orr in the end zone, and it is incomplete. And Brandon Williams, and we talked to him last week, says he would love to throw the football and has talked to the coaches about letting them try, but he misfired. Well, after last week, they ought to let him sell popcorn. He had a big punt return, a couple touchdowns receiving. And, uh, you know, Pam, it's rare that we get a chance to break down wideouts throwing motions, but let's, let's take a stab at it here. And look at the blocking. I mean, as a wide receiver, you can't hope for any more time than that. Throwing the ball down the football field, and he looked pretty good on the run. His first career pass attempt falls incomplete. He was fabulous last week. He had 220 total yards or all-purpose yards, including three touchdowns against Indiana. Now the more conventional handoff to Brian Calhoun, and he is taken down at the 24-yard line, picks up five more. Our Aflac trivia question, it has been 10 years when Northwestern won the Big Ten and went on to the Rose Bowl. The only active player from that team in the NFL, it's a defensive guy. Oh, man, and I, my undefeated streak has been broken. It was not Dwayne Bates, good guess, but a defensive guy, Barry Gardner, playing yeah. linebacker for the team in New York. And they're honoring that team here today, aren't they, Pam? Yep, there's a, a bunch of guys, like about 60 or so, from that Rose Bowl team. Another third down, Wisconsin 7 for 9 today as flags come down on a third and five. 
And that third down conversion rate has been a huge factor in the first half. Ball start. Number 63 on the offense. Still third down. You know, and as a defensive unit, Northwestern needs to take advantage of the break here on the penalty. They've got Stocko in a third and long situation. And there's a pretty good linebacker from that Rose Bowl team, Pat Fitzgerald. A line, the linebacker's coach now, very animated on the sidelines, and Randy Walker giving him a lot of credit for the work he has done. That was an exciting Rose Bowl. USC getting the win against Northwestern. Keyshawn Johnson taking over that football game late. Third and ten after the penalty. Stocko dumps it off to Calhoun. He has a lot of room in front of him and picks up the first down. So Brian Calhoun, when he's not killing you running the ball, can come out of the backfield. That's his fifth catch. He needed 10 yards and got 18. Well, on the last scoring drive, it was a third down conversion pass to Calhoun that really killed Northwestern. And again, look at Palermo, 52. And not a lot of interference to run out front. Not a lot of traffic. You know, the big 23-20 win against Michigan that has kind of set up this Wisconsin season. I thought it was the pass catching ability of Calhoun that set this team apart offensively, not his running ability. He had seven catches in that game. That's a record for any running back in the Barry Alvarez era. Calhoun riding the back of one of his linemen, gets it down to the four, picks up six more. You know, Barry Alvarez is missing a couple weapons on this offense. And Matt Bernstein, a big fullback, really lines up and is almost like a guard in terms of his physical stature. And also Daniels. Owen Daniels, a tight end. We're going to need those two players back down the stretch. Excuse me, Northwestern takes the timeout. Owen Daniels hurt his ankle very early last week against Indiana. We have not seen him. All right now, 2.15 left to go, and Wisconsin looking for another score. And those folks hoping that after today, Wisconsin will indeed be 6-0 on the season. The Badger fans have always traveled well. We talked about Alvarez's first Rose Bowl championship team uh, back in the early 90s. And I remember I, I broadcast that game for UCLA on radio, Pam, and I remember looking out, 100,000 fans and about 85,000 were dressed in red. And, you know, we, we all know that that's UCLA's home field during the season. It was, it was quite a spectacle. But not a home field when the Badgers come to town. Now second and goal from the four. Calhoun taken down, might have lost a half of the yard. Nick Roach, the junior from Milwaukee, one of two Wisconsin natives who get significant playing time on this Northwestern team, made the stop. And you talked to both of these coaching staffs. Uh, you know, this this matchup and, and this you know, mini rivalry in the Big Ten between these two teams has had a lot of physical games over the last five or six years, and they're really throwing the leather around down on field level today, Pam. Northwestern with another timeout. We will take the time now to go back to Reese Davis. All right, Pam, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, the Horns have hooked them first in the Red River rivalry. We'll show you exactly how. Seminoles also putting together a pretty scary offense in the College Game Day gang in Happy Valley. Look. Look, them and why Wisconsin doesn't look pretty, but they do keep winning on a consistent basis. Everybody talks about these Penn State linebackers. Yes, they're great. Ohio State's much better, but Ohio State has some great defensive backs also. All right, we'll talk about it at halftime. See you in a bit, Pam. All right, Reese, we look forward to visiting with the U3 guys coming up. Of course, Kirk and Lee both picking uh, Ohio State to win that big game at Penn State today. Well, I have to agree with Coach Holtz. You know, this isn't the prettiest team, offensively or defensively, as we look at a tremendous number for Wisconsin in the red zone. But you know, Coach Holtz hits the, the nail on the head. There's nothing fancy about the style of this Wisconsin team. They don't bully over with many star players or you know, featured players offensively or defensively, but they don't make many mistakes. They're rock solid fundamentally, and they play great special teams. And now coming up on a third and goal from the five, and another penalty comes down. Another penalty flag. Illegal substitution. Breaking the huddle with 12 players. On the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Illegal substitution. And Barry Alvarez, that's the kind of stuff that'll drive you crazy. Yeah, especially when you're coming out of a timeout. I mean, occasionally you might 
have a slip up, break in the huddle with 12, lining up with 12. But after a timeout, that's uh, that's not real fun for a coaching staff. And now Wisconsin will call time. Northwestern had called the last timeout as he, as a Stocko goes over. There are co-offensive coordinators for Wisconsin, Paul Christ and Brian White sharing the duties. And coming up before that game, Iowa will be at Purdue on ESPN. So a full day of Big Ten football on ESPN. And early on in this Big Ten schedule, it's been a sentimental journey of sorts with Barry Alvarez and Joe Paterno, both undefeated. We look at the standings, really, with the exception of Illinois. These teams are all bunched up within one, you know, one uh, game in the loss column. And, uh, and we're very early. I think Michigan's going to be heard from before the season is over. And you know, Wisconsin gets a big break not having to play Ohio State or Michigan State. Northwestern kicking themselves for blowing a 23-7 lead to Penn State here two weeks ago, or else they would be. 1-0 in the Big Ten, 3-1 overall. Third and goal now from the 10. Stocko dumps it off to Williams. And it's incomplete off of Williams' hands. McGargo got a hand on it, but the ball hit the turf. What do you think of that play call? I mean, he was right at the 10-yard line, the line of scrimmage with a lot of guys around. Well, I think they set up a two-way a two -way go. I mean, a two-way decision for Stocko. Stocko first had the ability to swing the ball out to his left. He didn't like what he saw, and then they set up the inside screen to Williams. That's dangerous when you get a deflection. Wisconsin failing to score a touchdown for the first time today after getting into the red zone. Taylor Melhoff, the sophomore from Aberdeen, South Dakota, nails it from 27 yards out, and Wisconsin takes the 10-point lead. So maybe a minor win for that Northwestern defense, just giving up the field goal. And boy, are there some horses in the Big Ten. Great running backs, Lawrence Maroney, Mike Hart, just torched Michigan State for the second straight season. Antonio Pittman, 171 against Iowa for Ohio State. And Tyrell Sutton, we're seeing him here today, a couple of touchdowns and a buck 12 against Penn State two weeks ago. And Brian Calhoun. Fabulous against Michigan, and that does not even take into account the seven catches he made. And look at the numbers and look at the carries for these guys. Yeah, that's what really jumps out at you is you talk about workhorses and, and packing the mail. I mean, Calhoun is averaging over 30 carries per game when Ron Dane won the Heisman Trophy for Wisconsin and Barry Alvarez. He only averaged just over 24 carries a game, winning the Heisman Trophy. Remember, he went about 255. Calhoun has 18 carries so far today. Brandon Roberson had a big return called back because of a penalty earlier, and he is stopped at the 20. Northwestern has one timeout left, and in case you're wondering who is number one in the country, it is the fabulously talented D'Angelo Williams at Memphis who has been even more fabulous because the top two quarterbacks at Memphis went down with broken legs already this season, and that kid is amazing. Yeah, and then when you don't have a pass game, it makes it so tough, not only on a running back, but an offensive line. You've got to have balance. And speaking of balance, we get to look at Northwestern's offense. Calhoun's numbers adding up. Here's Tyrell Sutton. And he keeps his legs going. Sutton refusing to go down. Finally bent over backwards at the 28. Mark Zalewski among those trying to lasso him in. Well, I've been so impressed with Tyrell Sutton. We've had a couple chances to watch him this year. We've got the visit with him. And I, I really think he's one of the class kids that I've gotten the, the pleasure to meet in college football in some time. Really handles himself well. Western short of picking up the first down going to be looking at about a third and one Randy Walker when we visited with him yesterday of course Sutton number one freshman running back in the country is Walker wants a timeout but he says he's not quite ready to coronate Tyrell Sutton yet 
as the next great thing, but maybe a little bit of that is, uh, is psychology. But when we talked to Tyrell yesterday, he had no idea that he was number one in the country as far as uh, freshman uh, rushing yards. As far as we know. Well, I believe it. <laughs> Do I love this? You know, <laughs> college kids, they always like to give you that touch of humility, but they read the papers too. I think he's humble, though. And boy, was he terrific against Northern Illinois, Tyrell Sutton. 214 yards and four touchdowns. How about that? The Big Ten Player of the Week, the first game he ever started. He replaced Brandon Roberson week one against Ohio and ran for over 100 yards in his first game, 214 yards in his first start. Jimmy Dykes has more on Tyrell. Well, he's used to having success as a youngster playing with older guys. Back when he was playing peewee football as an eight-year-old, he started on the 10-year-old team, and one of his teammates from that Akron area, NBA All-Star LeBron James. Tyrell says that LeBron James made, definitely made the right choice by choosing basketball. He said as a 10-year-old wide receiver, LeBron James was not very good. Tyrell was an eight-year-old linebacker on that team, and they both have prospered in their uh, respective sports, huh? And they're both, they both made fabulous decisions, obviously. And, uh, and boy, LeBron James, both of them from Akron. Obviously, that's where they knew each other. But uh, LeBron went in to play uh, high school football as a big guy. He just kind of lobbed it into him, right? Yeah, he did. As a, and as a high school player, Sutton he gained over 2,000 yards as a freshman in high school. Mr. Ohio on third and one. Sutton coming up large. Breaks an arm tackle. Gets a good block from Jonathan Fields and takes it all the way down to the 43-yard line of Wisconsin. 28 yards for Sutton. Well, Sutton builds a highlight package for us in one play here. I mean, that, that was some kind of run in a clock drive status. Inside a minute, of course, the clock stops on first downs in college football as they set the chains. Bazinet with time. Jonathan Fields and Zach Hampton in on the coverage. And I think it's going to be a pass interference call against Ike Guano for Wisconsin. Northwestern might get a break and get the ball back here. We have offsetting penalties. Holding. Number 63 on the offense. Pass interference the defense repeat first down now oh, that's a second holding call against the veteran the vocal leader of this team Zach Streif with a takedown on the left side of the screen and then Ike Guano contact with the ball in the air negates the interception by the Badgers yep that the interception there that was negated by Hampton first and 10 now with 46 seconds left to go from the 42 Bazinet going up top, and that ball is placed perfectly into the hands of Mark Fillmore. You couldn't have drawn that up more perfectly or thrown it more perfectly in a computer game. No, there are not many quarterbacks in college football that can make this throw. I mean, this is dropped right on the money, and he had Fillmore along the sideline, beautifully thrown football. Well, Fillmore does not have a lot of room to work with. This is tight coverage, and he saves some room to fade. And that was like a deep fade pattern. Fillmore used his big size to leave him some room to fade out and make the catch. Well, Brett Bell had the coverage, but the pass was better. Into the end zone, and oh, unable to get it. Sean Herbert stretching out. Clock stops now with 32 seconds left to go. Bazinet had what he wanted, and Bazinet's being careful with the football at times. He doesn't want to make mistakes. He had six there if he just was a touch more accurate with the football. Herbert ran a nice route for him in the end zone. He completed 64% of his passes coming into this game, 11 for 16 so far today. Second and goal from the nine, no timeouts left for Northwestern. Losing precious seconds. And again, no timeouts as the ball is caught by Kim Thompson at the four. You still have time. Get up to the line of scrimmage. 
You don't really want to run a clock play here. If you have a call, you'd like to throw it into the end zone. Third and goal, and he downs it. Clock stops with nine seconds left, and Northwestern will have it fourth and goal. And that's a situation where quarterbacks will yell clock, but if you burn the clock there with an incomplete pass, you force a field goal attempt. You'd like to have a code word that gets you into a great pass play in that situation. That way, you don't throw the ball to the turf. You get a shot into the end zone. And that's, that's an area where I think Northwestern has to practice up and have a play they can go to there instead of burning the down. Yeah, because they did have time to at least take a shot into the end zone. If it's incomplete, then you bring Howells in. Joel Howells from 21 yards out. And he punches that one through. And Northwestern unable to put the ball into the end zone, but they do get the field goal from Howells from 21 yards out to pull it within a touchdown. Yeah, and, and even getting the three points, that's still an impressive drive, and it cuts the lead to a touchdown. What a throw by Bazinet to Fillmore to set up that field goal for Northwestern, and I think that gives them a shot of adrenaline and momentum going into the locker room. And taking a look back at the throw that set up the three points for Northwestern, Look at Bazinet. I mean, he's been sitting in, feeling some pressure, and drops that deep fade route over the outside shoulder to Fillmore. Fillmore, you, you can't you can't say enough about his route there and keeping the pressure against the cornerback and then fading out and leaving some space for fifth-year senior quarterback. Fillmore, ninth in Northwestern history with. As far as catches are concerned, and he does have the 27-yard catch today that helps set up Bazinet's touchdown run, and then that beautiful catch that helps set up the field goal from Howells. Villarreal is the pooch kickoff kicker for Northwestern. And the two seconds left. It is covered up by Jarvis Mitten, one of the one of the receivers on this Wisconsin team. The Pontiac Performance Halftime Report is coming up next here on ESPN. We'll go back to Reese Davis, Coach Lee Holtz, and Mark May. Well, this is an interesting situation where you look at a quarterback. Some quarterbacks, you know, they top out throwing the ball about 60 yards. Other quarterbacks can throw it 70, 75 yards. It'll be interesting to see if Wisconsin takes a crack down the field on a Hail Mary. It looks like they may just go to a knee. I think they're going to a knee. <laughs> that formation, they will be content to go into the locker room with the seven-point lead over Northwestern. Wisconsin holding on the ball for almost 20 minutes, but Brett Bazinet able to lead that drive as they are down by a touchdown. Let's go down to Jimmy Dykes, who's standing by with Randy Walker. Coach, you get three points to finish off the half, but what happened on your third down play there? Well, we just decided to go clock and stop it. I didn't want to take any chances of not getting some points out of that drive. And if we have an inadvertent snap or a sack, we're out of the game then. And so we got we want to get a chance to score points. How concerned are you about the time of possession that they have right now on you? Well, uh, that's the least indicator in college football of success. You know, uh, you got to make points and make plays when you have the football. Uh, I thought we got things going in the second quarter. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks. So playing it safe there to go for the three points when they had it third and goal. So Randy Walker's team down by a touchdown as we head now to Reese Davis in the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. All right, Pam, glad to have you along the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. The performance at the end of the first half by the Northwestern offense, good drive to get down there, but you didn't like the way they handled it around the goal line without the timeout. No, not at all. It's poor preparation, in my opinion. And not only that, you have a two-minute offense. You're supposed to be prepared. You're supposed to have a package to go down there. Nine, ten seconds left on the clock, plenty of time to throw a fade pattern into the end zone, take a shot at the touchdown, still have time for the field goal. Now, offensive linemen, you think that way, but let me say this. The most damaging thing that can happen to a football team is to be two scores down. By making sure they had three on the board, kicking the field goal, they're only one score down. When you're one score down, there's a big difference in being behind. Yeah, but Coach, my point is there's enough time on the clock oh, for and, them to go and, for it, and if they don't get it, there's still time to kick the field goal. Th th there's no doubt about it. I, I agree with you in that respect, Mark. And for an offensive lineman, that's impressive. I really am, <laughs> aren't you? But let me say this. All about get attacking. the points on the board. All right. The, the, the coach says get the points on the board. The offensive <laughs> lineman says smash him, man. 
<laughs> I'm, leaning to, I'm leaning to taking a shot, Coach. You're going to have to convince me at some point. We'll talk some more football in just a bit. Some... Welcome back to Northwestern, where it is 17 to 10 in favor of unbeaten Wisconsin at the half. Northwestern settling for a 21-yard field goal at the end of the uh, second quarter to uh, get within a touchdown. Pam Ward here, joined by David Norrie and uh, Brett Bazinet, the senior quarterback for Northwestern, continuing to make big plays. Well, oh, this is a tough Wisconsin team. This is an undefeated Badger team, very good on defense. Bazinet at 150 yards in the first half. His plays are going to have to make the difference in the passing game in the second half if they're going to spring the upset. He did drop in a beautiful pass to Mark Fillmore that helped set up the field goal. Here is the Napa game track. Brian Calhoun, 140 total yards. He can run. He can catch. Very versatile, the transfer from Colorado. Tyrell Sutton, the all, the leader, excuse me, in rushing yards for any freshman in the country, has 48 yards on eight carries. That was his career long run right there at 28 yards towards the end of the second quarter. And Northwestern gets the football first. And I think Northwestern is gonna have to stick with some selective doses of the run game with, with Ty, Tyrell Sutton. You know, they can't abandon the run in the second half. You've got to keep Wisconsin honest along that defensive front. And deciding to take a knee in the end zone. Roberson and Northwestern will take over. You take a look now at the first half statistics. And again, the time of possession, David. And it's really telling a story. Two weeks ago, Northwestern's last game against Penn State. Almost 40 minutes of possession for this Wildcat offense, and the Badgers have turned the tables a bit this afternoon. Only nine more yards of total offense for Wisconsin, even though they ran 12 more plays and held onto the ball a lot longer. Sutton getting things started here in the second half, and goes forward for about a four-yard gain as we head down to the field and Jimmy Dykes. Pam, I talked to Barry Alvarez just prior to the kick of the second half, and. He said the theme in the locker room at halftime was to finish, finish blocks, finish tackles, finish our assignments. He said look for some adjustments in his secondary defensively. He said offensively he's happy with his balance, but they do want to throw downfield some in the second half from Stocko to his receivers. Pam? That's interesting that he would say balance. 31 rushes and only 12 passes. And he considers that balance. Maybe not as far as play selection is is uh, involved as Sutton gets that carry. Well, Barry Alvarez isn't interested in balance as long as he's running the ball effectively. He'll run it until you can stop him. And conversely, this offense for Northwestern, you know, their whole story is balance. They want to spread you out. And Randy Walker talks about going ahead and splitting them, then hitting them. And you know, Bazinet, along with Sutton, are going to have to mix up the run and pass effectively. Third and two, Sanders coming in on the blitz. Bazinet goes the other way. A very important spot as Fields caught it. And he is over the first down marker. So he slid down. Of course, in college football, you don't have to be touched. As soon as you're down, you're down. Brett Bielema, the defensive coordinator, and no one has scored in the first five games in which they have played in the third quarter. And I want to go back to that balance thing. Yes, as far as play selection was concerned, it wasn't balanced, but they were balanced in yards. 112 rushing yards, 113 passing yards for the Badgers in the first half. Sutton breaks free for a first down and more. Tyro Sutton, the true freshman from Akron, tackled down inside the 24-yard line by Brett Bell, but he's broken a couple of big ones today. Well, he's been so impressive. The first four games of the season for the Wildcats. Remember, this is a true freshman. One of the best running backs to ever come out of the state of Ohio. And his numbers prove it. He's had two or three highlight film runs in this game. And what's really setting him apart, Pam, is he is running through tackles. Now over 100 yards again. The fourth 100-yard game for him. And that was a 45-yard run, a new career high. Hamlet replaces him in the backfield as Sutton catches his breath. Bazinet, Fillmore coming back to the ball, but he goes to Hamlet, who had to turn around and was unable to grab it. All sorts of time on that play. 
And oh. it just goes as an incompletion. Well, Bazinet, we, we talked about his running ability and his ability to pull the ball down. At times, they'll call runs to the quarterback. But I think he's been exceptional in this game, buying time behind the line of scrimmage. He's had some opportunities to pick his spots, to move left to right, and then find receivers. And I think his decision-making is continuing to be solid at the quarterback position. Sutton has checked back in as a tailback on second down. And Bazinet keeps it himself. Brett Bazinet trips and falls inside the five-yard line. It looked like he was running for a score. And he's laughing at himself because we talked to him about it yesterday. Tyrell Sutton described his running style as unorthodox and not pretty. And this was both of that. Well, when you hear about players on artificial turf, they'll say, hey, the turf monster got me. Well, this time the grass monster got him. He was free, and he was going to walk in for the touchdown. Still, Bazinet, what a cut. A real decisive cut to create that seam in the middle of the field. First and goal from the four. And he's looking to put it up. Bazinet in the end zone to Fillmore for the touchdown. And a great way to open up the second half for Northwestern. Fillmore's first touchdown catch of the season and the third of his career. And yes, that's the first time Wisconsin has given up points in the third quarter this season. Howell's extra point attempt is blocked. So Wisconsin hangs on to the lead. So a huge block on the extra point, but Bazinet, his run wasn't pretty, but this pass was. Fillmore gets the touchdown, and they're back to within a point. Look at a nice tall ship going through, or sailing on Lake Michigan. That's not one of yours, is it, David? No. no. no uh, Often goes yachting. Typically yachts mm, it's too south of France you. and the Caribbean. Uh, what a beautiful sight, though. This venue, this campus, stadium, one of the best in college football. And Northwestern continues to keep it away from the dangerous Brandon Williams with their short kickoffs. Of course, giving North or uh, Wisconsin short fields as Jarvis Mitten fields that kickoff again. Let's go back to the failed extra point. Yeah, and this is going to be a low kick. Roderick Rogers, number 22, is going to get up. He's going to get a piece of the football. But that rests with Howells, the kicker, and that was not very good execution. You got to get the ball up with trajectory and a lot quicker than that to have success. And you, know, you kind of hold your breath if you're Northwestern and wonder if that comes into play later on in this football game. So instead of being a tie game, it's a one-point lead for Wisconsin. Calhoun gets the football and goes nowhere. That was, by the way, the first block kick for Wisconsin this year. And Howells is a kicker. Did kick that 21-yard field goal earlier today. But that was a little bit of a knuckleball that didn't get a lot of elevation on that kick. And then that extra point attempt just blocked. Well, as you get deeper and deeper into the Big Ten schedule, the weather becomes more of a factor. Uh, you know, there's some wind down on the field level. The elements start to take charge. And it's your place kicking at a premium as you get into October and November. Second and nine now for the Badgers. Calhoun continues to be the workhorse. Barry Cofield had a shot at him right at the line of scrimmage, but Calhoun was able to break free for another yard. Kevin Mims making the stop. Well, this defense for Northwestern has been maligned, and they did give up over 770 yards to Arizona State. They gave up big plays against Penn State. Now they had Penn State on the ropes, fourth and 15, about a minute to go. Gave up a fourth and 15 two weeks ago. But I think that they've settled down, and they're playing pretty well here to open up the second half along that front seven. This would be a huge stop here on third and eight. In Wisconsin's first possession of the second half. Time for Stocko to run, and he dumps it underneath the Calhoun, who will lose yardage. Tim McGargle coming up with the stop, and for the first time today, Northwestern gets a three and out on defense. Yeah, and you make adjustments in the locker room at halftime. Two big drives for Wisconsin, where Stocko converted to Calhoun underneath. 
got him matched up against linebackers. And early in the third quarter here, Northwestern reacting to Calhoun as he slipped out of the backfield. And only the second time today Wisconsin will punt. DeBush had a 46-yarder that he planted beautifully at the one-yard line way back in the first half. Marquise Cole, the best punt returner in Division 1A football, gets it for the Cats. And terrific coverage by the Wisconsin special teams. Lamar Watkins on the linebackers coming down there to make the stop. Northwestern's already scored in this half, and they have the ball again. Undefeated Wisconsin with its hands full right now with Northwestern. Northwestern has already scored a touchdown in this quarter. They have the ball for the second time on their 27. Bazinet to Tyrell Sutton, the freshman running sensation, gets it up to about 33 as we go back to re Bounce back game for Virginia, who just got pasted by Maryland. Maryland scored 45 points in one game. Yeah, that was an eye open. Lance Paul, the running back for Maryland, coming out of nowhere to have a huge game as Northwestern and Sutton stopped about a yard short of the first down. Brett Bazinet's numbers, both running and passing, and he should have had a, another rushing touchdown, except he tripped up around the five-yard line, was able to throw it in on the next play for a touchdown to Mark Fillmore. Well, Bazinet needed some help from Tyrell Sutton in the running game, and the yards were hard to come by early in the football game. But Sutton and this offensive line are starting to give Bazinet help. Third and one high snap handled by Bazinet, and Sutton able to power his legs forward. Boy, Sanders, Dante Sanders seemed to have him stopped, but Sutton at 5'9", maybe 190 pounds, able to keep it going. Uh, Dante Sanders couldn't quite hold up at the point of attack. Yeah, that gives you an idea. I mean, 100 and maybe 75 pounds, Sutton, 5'9". You know, he is not a big player, but he has tremendous lower body strength, and he won the battle at the point of attack. Already over 100 yards. He is spelled by Roberson, and that pass to Eric Peterman just a little bit too high. Bazinet had him open and missed him. Well, Bazinet has missed a couple of balls out in the flat, and there is a bit of a crosswind down on field level. He looked relaxed on that delivery. I can't find much fault with the way he's played in this game. He has not only kept the Wildcats in the football game, but I think he's given them some prospects of pulling an upset here. 13 for 22 so far. Does have a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. And now on second and 10, Roberson inside. Gets the shovel pass and is stopped about a yard short of the first down by Johnny White as we head down to the field again and Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Pam, Brett Bazinet is a fifth-year senior, but Randy Walker says it's taken him four full years to really step up and understand what it means to be a leader as a quarterback. He said, finally this year, Brett Bazinet has gotten away from being a politician running for office, you know, where you tell everybody what you want to hear all the time. And now when he steps in the huddle, he's holding guys accountable. And he said, because of that, every time he steps in the huddle, all 10 other guys are instantly a better football player, but it's taken him four young, long years to get to that point. Well, and when you're when you're in a quarter, when you're quarterback and you're stepping in the huddle, especially at this level of play, and it looks like the Wildcats picked up the first down. But at this level of play, you know, it's not about making other guys around you happy. It's about having guys around you play better and respect you. And you know, Brett Bazinet is that type of player. It's really going to be kind of sad, Pam, to see him leave and the mark he's put on this Northwestern program. Still a lot of work to be done here in the season. We're early in the Big Ten schedule. He's having himself a football game this afternoon. Yep, Randy Walker says he's sort of the consummate pleaser, and once he realized he didn't have to be a friend to everybody, things started to get better, but it took a lot of talks to get him there. That's going to be a loss of a couple of yards for Jonathan Fields. Another update upcoming from Reese Davis. All right, Pam, how about a little Beamer ball for you? Virginia Tech and Marshall. Bernie Moore is going to try to throw it for the Thundering Earth. That's a severe tactical error. Vince Hall pick six. That is the 99th non-offensive touchdown in the Beamer era. They've added another 31-7. Used to seeing that from Virginia Tech, and that was the, 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 the quintessential ill-advised pass. Trying to get rid of the football. Bazinet using his legs. 
and takes it downfield, steps out of bounds at the 45-yard line, picked up nine. You know, a couple weeks ago, we talked to the Penn State defensive coaches, and they said, you know, the real key to playing this offense for Northwestern, the spread offense, is to get them off schedule. They're murder on you if they can get that third and two, third and three situation. Bazinet, with his quick throws and his selective runs, has put his team in good positions in third down. Third and three, they're six for nine today in third down situations, 69% on the season. And they get another one, Fillmore, able to step in front of Allen Langford and get the first down. Five catches now for Fillmore, the senior from Reynoldsville, Ohio. Well, and it's so nice as a quarterback to have a receiver like Fillmore and to have a receiver that's respected. Uh, he doesn't have the best speed in the world, but we've seen a couple big plays down the field in the deep passing game. you got to respect that on the outside, and that's like stealing candy from a baby when it's pitch and catch three to four yards. Hurt his ankle on his first punt return of the season, and Fillmore finally getting healthy as Roberson gets the carry. Brandon Roberson, the ball carrier. And he is tackled down after about a three-yard game. And... A huge one in Happy Valley. So big our college game day guys are there. Bazinet zips it. It is complete to Ross Lane. Again, this Northwestern offense, he, he distributes the ball to just about everybody. Well, he not only distributes the ball, but he is making money throws. This is an NFL caliber ball. And he's made about five or six of these in the game. This is not an easy ball right here. And Lane is a big receiver, running that inside route on the skinny post. Ball was delivered on time and perfectly. So a first and goal from the seven. Sutton cuts inside and is stopped just short of the goal line. Brett Bazinet, by the way, now over 200 yards passing today. That is a Northwestern record. 20th time he's gone over 200. So he's going to leave with a bunch of records. Well, and, and this is, uh, you know, this is a Wisconsin defense, one of the top 10 units in the country stopping the run. And if you're a Badger coach or player, you're thinking about this time over on the sideline, we're in a football game. Second and goal from the one, Sutton. And the Wildcats have taken the lead. Brett Bielema no wondering what's happened to this vaunted Wisconsin defense as Northwestern has scored touchdowns on both of its possessions this half. Yeah, some viewers might be wondering, why don't you go for two here to take, you know, a, uh, take a, a lead of seven points. I like taking the point early in the game. 5.52 to go in the third quarter. Take the point point, move on. Hey, I agree with you. It was Howells that time much better form as he punches through the extra point. Brett Bazinet leading the way, but it was Sutton who took it in for his ninth touchdown of the season. 23 push-ups now for the Northwestern cheer squad. How about a 73-yard touchdown drive and an 80-yard touchdown drive for Northwestern so far here in this third quarter? Tyrell Sutton over 100 yards again. The only game in which he did not go over 100 yards. He had 98 against Arizona State and didn't get the ball at all in the fourth quarter. They only had 12 carries in that game. So Wisconsin unbeaten and the 14th ranked team in the country is down. And again, Brandon Williams will not get his hands on this kickoff as it is taken at the 26 yard line. Daiwan Rowan gets it. Wisconsin down by six with the ball. First and 10 from their 26. Stocko looking to go up top. And he finds Calhoun. His favorite receiver so far today, and he picks up the first down up at the 39. Adam Cadella makes the stop. Wisconsin going with two tight ends. Nice job up front, this offensive line. You know, we, we mentioned that they didn't run the ball real effectively last week in, against Indiana. I think Barry Alvarez was equally disappointed with their pass protection. He said they were lethargic, 
know, Pam, you mentioned he, his comment that they were sleepwalking, but they're holding up well up front, and Stocko is doing a nice job of continuing to find Calhoun. Calhoun, Calhoun with seven catches equals his career high. Got that against Michigan a couple of weeks ago. And here comes McGarvel. Tim McGarvel coming in for the second time today and sacking the quarterback, Stocko. Well, this defense gave up a load of yards against Northern Illinois, Arizona State, Penn State, and it's been eating at Tim McGargle. Uh, you know, he's one of the best tacklers in the country off last season, and he has stepped up his play. He is really playing with great intensity this afternoon. Two sacks doubles his career mark coming into today. Stocko going underneath Calhoun. That's a new career high. Eight catches for him and another first down. Brian Calhoun showing the shiftiness. Brendan Smith finally gets him out of bounds, but not until he's gone all the way down to the 36 of Northwestern. Well, the biggest win of the season for Wisconsin against Michigan. Game on the line. Stocko went underneath to Calhoun on the game-winning drive. And... You remember Joe Montana playing with the 49ers, the way he used to drop the ball off to Rathman as fullback and Roger Craig as tailback. Comfortable that they could get the job done after the catch and pick up yards, and I think that's the confidence, the kind of confidence that Stocko has in Calhoun. Calhoun, the leading receiver and rusher in the game today. Stocko, 11 for 14, does have one interception, and he takes off, gets the block from his fullback. Chris Presley as Stocko able to get it down to the 31, picking up about five. Both quarterbacks in this football game. Uh, you hear about game management, making smart decisions, making the right play. And both quarterbacks have executed so well, and you can see it in those total yards numbers. How about 369 total yards for the Wildcats against this usually stout Wisconsin defense? Second and four. Booker Stanley this time gets the carry, and he is stopped. Barry Cofield among those in the middle of the Northwestern line. He only picked up about one. And right here, Pam, you get about a third and three, maybe three and a half. This might be a four down situation. Uh, a long field goal try might not be the way to go. If they don't pick up the first down here, I think Gary Alvarez is already thinking about a fourth down situation and maybe going for it. Brian White, the co-offensive coordinator, on third and three for the Badgers. Stonko's looking downfield towards Orr, and it's incomplete. Skip that one low, Marquise Cole on the coverage. Well, Stocko had an opening. And if he puts just a little bit more on that ball, Jonathan Orr has the capability coming up with that catch. But I thought Stocko short on that throw a bit. Could have put a little more velocity on the football. Moore only has one catch today for 15 yards. This is a 46-yarder for Taylor Melhoff. Would be a career high for him, a career long, and he gets it. Melhoff, the sophomore from Aberdeen, South Dakota, puts three up on the board for the Badgers. And Barry Alvarez showing some real confidence in Melhoff. Melhoff and his punter, DeBush, have been weapons in the special teams department this year. Melhoff has been so impressive. Uh, he got a nice little wind blowing down on field level. And this place kick there, Pam, cut right through the crosswind in between the crossbars. Melhoff's only previous miss was 51 yards, and that was against North Carolina. Nails that one from 46. Let's go down to Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Dave, you're talking about John Stocko maybe short-arming that last pass. He told us last week he actually has a checklist that he goes through in his mind within a game. When he starts throwing balls wrong, he makes sure that he's not overstriding, and he also makes sure that he is driving into his throw. And it's not often we hear quarterbacks talk about within a game thinking about their mechanics. And you're a former quarterback. I would like to get your thoughts on that. 
Well, Jimmy, if you, if you play quarterback, it all starts with the feet. That's your foundation. That's your base. And number one, you got to get back to your depth quickly in the pocket, and then you have to have good balance. And Stocko has had some problems with this balance. Threw the ball terrifically a week ago. You know, on that ball to Orr on the last drive, didn't look like he had great leverage on that back foot. That might have been a fact. So after the Melhoff field goal, that kick is through the end zone. And Northwestern takes over from the 20, still up on to ESPN.com. The Bengals' jokes have subsided across the country. Tyrell Sutton again showing that strength, gets it up to about the 28 yard line. Lamar Watkins hanging on. But Sutton again, this is a guy who is listed at 5'9 and is probably closer to 5'8. And he said that he was told he was too small to play high school football, forget college football. There were people who told him he was too little for that. Well, and he wasn't highly recruited, but there were major schools that were after him. Randy Walker, yeah, it was a masterful piece of recruiting to offer Sutton early. A lot of Mac schools were interested, and some teams did get in late from bigger conferences. And Sutton again proves his stuff by picking up a first down. And the first guy, he's just going by. He's, he's not going down with the first hit. Well, and with the spread at offense, you don't expect the team to run the ball physically. Uh, the spread offense, People think pass, spread them out, throw the ball to the outside. But Sutton is breaking tackles on the initial tackler that shows in the holes. And this Northwestern team is moving the ball and getting nice push up front from their offensive line. As Sutton takes a break, there is a Wisconsin defender on the field. With the training staff all around him. We join you from Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois, the home of Northwestern University. Wisconsin is number 14 in the country, unbeaten, and atop the Big Ten standings, but they are trailing. Northwestern now 23 to 20. Tyrell Sutton, 132 yards on the ground. The true freshman who leads all true freshmen, or all freshman period, in rushing, has put on quite a show here so far today. And while we uh, wait word on the uh, injured player, Casey Hogan, let's go back to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. Oh, Demon Deacons giving Florida State and Bobby Bowden a dose of their own medicine. I mean, that's usually Bobby Bowden faking punts in his own territory and running trick plays. And Seminoles finding themselves in a fight. Hogan finally on the cart, and he gets a nice hand from this crowd as he is taken off. A lot of fans, again, making the trip. It's about two and a half hours from Madison, Wisconsin, here to Evanston, which is the first suburb north of Chicago. And, and boy, uh, you mentioned it back in the first half. Wisconsin traveled well to California. You know they're going to travel well to a game two and a half hours uh, away. They're just great fans. Yeah, and there's certain universities in college football where you visit and you play in Madison. I played there as, as, a, as a college football player when I was back at UCLA in the 80s. They have great fans, classy fans, fans that understand football. And after the delay, Bazinet throws it to a wide open Jonathan Fields, Bazinet who picks up the first down. That's the sixth catch for Fields. Johnny White, White Bell. And this offense just continues to click. Well, and the success in the run game gives that play-action fake some bite to it. Bazine faking the underneath handoff to Sutton, really holding linebackers and giving him some openings in the short and intermediate areas of this pass offense. Another first down. From the 46 of Northwestern, Bazine pitches it to Gerard Hamlet. Redshirt freshman from Fort bounce. Lauderdale, Florida. And he picks up a few. Let's take a look at the Eight last six possessions for the Wildcats. The last three have been line. very successful. Yeah, points on four of five drives. They fumbled the ball out near midfield on the snap shotgun formation. 
Goodness, the last three drives, 75, 80, and 73 for scores. Mazinay has completed seven of nine passes this half. Going up top again, he has his man in full stride. Pip Thompson, touchdown Wildcats. And Brett Mazinay just continues to throw perfect footballs. with the 52-yard touchdown catch. Ryan Field is buzzing as Howells comes in for the extra point. And the Wildcats lead by 10. Well, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. Brett Bielema, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, they love to play man across the board, load up the box, stop your run. But if you can beat them man-to-man -man on the outside, you can have success. Kim Thompson, Jonathan Fields, the speed guys, the deep threats for Northwestern. We talked to Brett Basnay. He said we worked all week long hitting deep balls, taking advantage of the style of play that Wisconsin offers you. And once again, as you said, Pam, a perfect ball from Basnay. We said at the top he had to have one of the, his best games at Northwestern. This is the best I've ever seen him throw the football. Basnay now 20 for 28 with a couple of touchdown passes. And we also were just talking about how Wisconsin was concentrating on not giving up big plays. And there's a 52-yarder that really bites him. This guy, Brandon Williams, number one, one of the best kickoff returners in the country, has not gotten the football. The only player in the nation in the top six in punt returns and kick returns, and they continue to kick away from him. And they're taking the trade. They're taking relatively good field position in exchange for Williams not touching the ball. Rowan again gets it instead of Williams, and they will start from the 27. Now remember, Pam, this defense gave up a fourth and 15. Yeah, Penn State was facing a fourth and 15 from their own 14 yard line with about a minute to go two weeks ago. And if they don't allow Penn State to convert that play, they're three and one coming into this game with their only loss coming against a very good Arizona State team. Now down by 10, Wisconsin with the football on the 27th. Sticking to the game plan, Calhoun, a huge hole on the right side of the line, and he's getting huge yardage. He is finally pushed out of bounds by Herschel Henderson, but Calhoun busts one for 42 yards. Well, Wisconsin is known as a left-handed team. They love to run to the left, but this time the zone play to the right side, great blocking up front. That was Craig Urbrick, the right tackle, that created a crease. And usually, you're going to see Calhoun take this all the way. Herschel Henderson had an angle in the defensive backfield. Calhoun was not caught from behind on that play. Henderson ran him down with an angle. And Calhoun again over 100 yards, 117 so far today. Williams finally getting his hands on the ball, this time as a receiver. And he picks up about six. Let's go. Boy, has that been a football game the last two or three years? But the last 16 times they've met, Michigan has won. No matter how close Minnesota gets. Second and four. Booker Stanley this time getting to the outside, showing his speed by Chris Cole. Able to get a hand on him. Stanley was that close to breaking it for a score. And Booker Stanley, a power back. But he shows a nice little burst of speed and just runs right around Cole. Cole's a 4-3 guy, so Stanley set up that move to the outside well. Brian Calhoun back in. Now first and goal from the six for Wisconsin, trying to answer the Northwestern touchdown in a hurry. As Orr comes in motion, Stock. Tackles him around the two. 
So Stocko again making the decision to take off and head towards the goal line. But McGargle, this is a guy, I don't know if I've ever seen him miss a tackle. Yeah, he's a solid tackler. And, and you look over at Barry Alvarez, uh, three Rose Bowl championships. Goes out to Pasadena, wins three times. And the mark of a championship team is responding and fighting back with drives. Wisconsin's put a nice drive together here. Second and goal from the one. Calhoun cuts outside, lunges for the goal line, and is in for the Wisconsin touchdown. And the Badgers respond very nicely and very quickly and cut the lead back to four points. And they've got most of the yardage on that drive thanks to the legs of Brian Calhoun. Stanley also with a nice chunk of yardage. And Calhoun with his 11th rushing touchdown, that leads the country as Melhoff puts through the extra point. Brian Calhoun is a speed back, and he's not a traditional Badger running back. You know, with power and, and a physical nature inside, but on that touchdown run, he showed some will at the goal line. So we have a couple of terrific running backs. We talked about them at the top of the show, and they have not disappointed both over 100 yards rushing. And look at Calhoun about to get the double, only five yards away from a 100-yard receiving deck. Sutton, the true freshman, doing his part for Northwestern. How about that drive? Five plays, 72 yards in a minute seven. Yeah, and there are college football teams across the country that go south when they're down 10 points on the road. The momentum, the crowd behind the home team. Wisconsin came out and made it look easy. This team is not going to go away. So with a minute 15 left to go in the third quarter, Three points separate, number 14, Wisconsin, and Northwestern. That ball is picked up by Hamlet, and he backs away. Gerard Hamlet keeps his feet. Can he keep going? He ran out of gas. but still took it 82 yards. Well, take a look at this run back. We want to freeze here. Roberson, number 11, is going to get caught looking back at his running back instead of picking up a block right there. Instead of looking forward, Roberson, and it allows the Wisconsin team to recover. What a play on the return by Hamlet. Watch Roberson, right there, number 11. He's looking back instead of picking up the block upfield. Still, Hamlet continues on down the football field. Hamlet also ran into Campbell Black. He ran into a more purple shirts than white shirts there for a while. A remarkable run back for Hamlet, who came into this game ninth in the Big Ten in kick returns, averaging just under 20 yards per return, but that one was 82 yards. Took it all the way down to the 14. I don't think Roberson, as his lead blocker, was figuring he was gonna pull that type of run back. He thought Hamlin might have been going down. And special teams, that's usually Wisconsin's area of strength. Second down, Gazanay decides to pitch it to Sutton. Tyrell Sutton heading into the end zone, and Northwestern has scored again. What a third quarter. Wisconsin had allowed zero points in the fourth quarter in five games heading into this game. And now they've given up 26, make it 27 points. An unbelievable third quarter for Northwestern.
I mean, they're pitching a shutout in the third quarter of the season. And an eruption. And Sutton is the all-time leading back in Ohio high school history. You can't give him that kind of space on the perimeter. Azanay hanging on to it to the last second, and then Sutton had nothing but green in front of him. And what do you think Brett Bielema is thinking right about now, the defensive coordinator for the Badgers? Well, when this Northwestern offense gets moving and they're having success on the ground, Bazinet's making the throws that he's making in this football game. They're a really tough offense to defend. They really have you on roller skates as a defense when they're picking and choosing the run and pass. We said at the top, man, that Bazinet would be the key. And I think he's having his best overall game in his career at Northwestern. There have been some pretty good games for Bazinet over the last four years. The Wisconsin coach has talked about his game management. He always seems to put him in the right calls. And he has made some terrific decisions today, holding on to the ball again just to the perfect moment to get it to Sutton. And Brandon Williams will not get his hands on the kickoff today as Villarreal kicks it short to Rowan, who gets it out to around the 42. Let's head back to Reese. All right, Reese, so Florida State getting a little bit of breathing room here. And again, Wisconsin giving up a ton of points here in the third quarter, something they had not done all season. They've given up zero heading in to this game. And 27 for the Wildcats. So Stocko going up top. Jonathan Orr, the senior, able to take it all the way down to the 29-yard line. So Wisconsin continues to counter. Jonathan Orr has looked great the last couple of weeks. And Wisconsin fans waiting over the last couple of years for Orr to deliver on the promise of his freshman season. He had 48 catches, was really a breakout player in the Big Ten a couple seasons back. And, uh, and he's doing a nice job of settling into seams and openings down the field. Another good ball from Stocker. And over 40 catches you mentioned as a freshman. As a sophomore, he only had seven catches, even though he played in every game. He has two catches today, one of them for a touchdown. That one went for 29. Calhoun against the green. Rayola blocking for him in front. And he is taken out at the 15-yard line. And Calhoun now over 100 yards, both receiving and rushing. And what's so impressive to watch this big offensive line is they're all athletic. They all run so well. And look, let's freeze it right there. One, two, three. Across the board, picking up their blocks. And, you know, I haven't seen an offensive line that likes to get out and move like this since the last time we watched Minnesota. You know, that slinger and Satterstrom. This is an athletic bunch up front. First and 10 now from the 14. And Wisconsin come right back. Stocko underneath finds his tight end, Jason Posiak who only picks up about three as a very wild third quarter comes to a close. Wisconsin giving up 27 points to Northwestern in the third quarter, but they're still very much in it as the fourth quarter is coming. Northwestern fans still celebrating that explosive third quarter in which their team put 27 points up on the board against a Wisconsin defense that only gives up on average 18 points a game. But right now it's the Northwestern defense being tested. On a second and eight from the 12. Fourth quarter just underway. Stocko to Brandon Williams. And a good job again, McGarver right in the thick of things. Well, if you're the Badgers, you'd love to have a touchdown in this situation, but you also have to be cognizant of what's going on in the scoreboard. You're down 10 points. You want to come away with the score. It's very similar to the situation that Randy Walker had before the first half. He wanted to make sure that he went into the locker room, played it conservatively, got the three points up on the board. If you're John Stocko, the quarterback here, you want to make sure you don't make any mistakes with the football. Keep that three points in your back pocket. How big is this? Third and five on the nine. Calhoun kept in to block. Going in the end zone for Orr, and he's got the touchdown. Jonathan Orr with the second touchdown catch of the game, and Wisconsin staying right in there.
Well, John Stocko and company responding very well as they have alternated touchdowns here with Northwestern a couple of times over. Melhoff makes it a three-point game once again. Well, Jonathan Orr, the senior from Detroit, has a 15-yard touchdown catch and then grabs this one from John Stocko with plenty of time left in the fourth. Kicking off for Wisconsin. Crazy one going on here. Northwestern leads Wisconsin 37 to 34 as John Stocko has just thrown another touchdown pass to Jonathan Orr to cut the lead to three. There's a good look at Orr. Boy, he had a good game last week. Four catches for 128 yards and a win over Indi Indiana. And he is picking up where he left off with two touchdown catches today. Roberson takes the kickoff a couple of yards deep and pays for it as he is knocked down around the 14-yard line by Joshua Neal, freshman linebacker from Nashville, Tennessee. Put a licking on him. How about 27 third-quarter points as we look at the Napa game track? 27 for Brett Bazinger and company. Kim Thompson. That's a 52-yard touchdown catch. The perfect pitch to Tyrell Sutton. Takes it in from 14 yards out. Wisconsin has given up 27 third quarter points all season, all of them coming in this game. Here comes Bazinet. And another lick. That's Roger Rogers. But Jonathan Fields was able to hang on to the football somehow. Let's go back to Reese Davis. Maybe Texas finally going to break through for some heavily favored to beat Oklahoma. Here it's second and six, and Wisconsin fans are really making some noise. Bazinet tries to quiet them, and look at Bazinet. Mark Zalewski, who's a terrific linebacker, was taken backwards by a driving Bazinet. Well, this is a read by Bazinet, and he's gonna fake underneath. He's watching the defensive end. He reads the defensive end downhill along the line of scrimmage and shows some strength finishing off that run. And Brett Bazinet has thrown the ball with incredible touch and accuracy this afternoon, but you got to love his heart in addition to his passing the ball. Picks up the first down on the 26. Sutton gets it up close to the 30-yard line. Wisconsin, number 14 in the country, unbeaten on the season, 5-0 overall, 2-0 in the Big Ten, but they have their hands full with Northwestern, and Northwestern hasn't stopped a lot of people either. Look at the total yards, up to 878 between the two football teams with most of the fourth quarter left to go. position with courage and Baz is going to sit in until the last count and he's going to take a shot on delivery and still deliver the ball perfectly outside pocket to Herbert that was a helmet to helmet blow they could have easily dropped the flag in the backfield so now first and ten and Bazinet directs traffic and coming back to make the catch is Mark Fillmore He's like a surgeon out there, Bazinet. Six catches now for Fillmore. Well, Brett Bazinet continues to get great work up front. Look at the offensive line working together. Blue jersey on white jersey, giving him time. And finally, he finds Fillmore down the football field with another big-time throw. And Bazinet now over 300 yards on the day, his fifth career 300-yard game. And he's going for more. Taken off. And Bazinet goes down in the arms of Gino Cruz. 
but he'll still pick up a couple of more. As the clock continues to roll, now inside, 11 and a half minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Second and eight now from the 29. Bazinet fakes the shovel pass and takes off. And Bazinet juking a little bit. Stop right near the first down marker by Brett Bell. And that was something that Randy Walker talked to Bazinet about. He said, you know, you know, you're not Walter Payton. Don't try to make those juking moves, just kind of go down. But uh, it's hard to find fault with uh, much of what Bazinet has done today. You know, running the football isn't all about speed. It's about cuts, decision-making, vision. And as we mentioned at the top, Bazinet was going to have to have a great day with his decisions, not only throwing the ball, but running the football. Again, he makes the right choice on the shovel pass. He has 64 yards on 10 carries, a career-high rushing for Brett Bazinet. Up top again, and wide open is Jonathan Fields. And he is inside the four-yard line. That's eight catches for Fields. And you talk about a team, you know, just in, in total sync in the rhythm. Everything is in favor right now for this offense. Well, as we mentioned on the last drive, when this team gets that combination of run and pass, spreading the ball around to the receivers, it's very difficult to defense. We saw it a couple weeks ago against Penn State. And the Wildcats jumped out to a 23 to 7 lead in that football game. And Bazinet is pushing all the right buttons. And you know that that's a bitter taste still in their mouths. Losing to Penn State, fourth and goal from the four. But Zach Streif moving a little bit too early. Yeah, and this has not been a Streif day. Three on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And Streif has worked well up front, and he's done a great job blocking for Bazinet and Tyrell Sutton. But Streif is going to make another mistake down here with early movement. And he's been hit by a couple holding calls. And in this spot on the football field, in a game this tight, you can't make that mistake as a senior leader on this team. So they get pushed back. Now first and goal from the nine. That was the first penalty by either team in this half. Bazinet with time, throws it, and incomplete as he was going towards Tyrell Sutton. So second and goal from the nine coming up. Uh, Brett Bazinet knows he had a shot there. A little backdoor opportunity to Sutton up along the sideline. He tried to to sneak that ball into the goal line area. And up top again to Sutton. This time it works for the touchdown. Northwestern has scored touchdowns on five straight possessions. to go and there is a flag it looks like an unsportsman like conduct call after the whistle and a touchdown stands so Tyrell Sutton able to get in Catching that touchdown pass. That's his third touchdown today. Two of them on the ground and then that one. And Northwestern continues to shred this Wisconsin defense in the second half. Joel Howells puts the extra point through. Northwestern has had five possessions in the second half all five of them culminating in touchdowns tyrell sutton with the latest and the lead is back to 10. the 
With 44 points, Northwestern has scored today. The most Wisconsin has given up all season. And look at the second half yardage. Northwestern with 337 in a, a quarter plus about five minutes and 15 seconds of playing time. They've scored five touchdowns in five second half possessions. And Brandon Williams for the first time gets his hands on the football. This is why Northwestern did not kick to him all game long because he breaks it all the way down to the 45 of the Wildcats. Let's go back to and high definition on Sunday. So the Yankees down two games to one. Going to have to wait to play until tomorrow at the earliest as Calhoun gets it. Wisconsin again tries the counter punch. As this Northwestern offense led by fifth year senior quarterback Brett Bazinet is, uh, boy, this is something you might want to just put on a tape and show at a coaching clinic on how to run this offense. So Brett Bazinet is in a tremendous rhythm and he's getting some great play calling from his offensive coordinator, Mike Dunbar. And we keep talking about the balance between run and pass. And Bazinet is really having his way. Stocco has been up to the task, and he's facing a 10-point deficit. That's right. We can't forget what the Wisconsin offense has done. And Stocco firing away to Calhoun again. Brian Calhoun out of the backfield has been spectacular. Excuse me, that's Brandon Williams, number one, not number two. So he's made a couple of big plays, but a flag is back at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a 26-yard catch if it holds up. Yeah, Williams is working against Marquise Cole, the top cover man for Northwestern. Number 72 on the offense. 10-yard penalty is enforced from the previous spot. Repeat second down. And Joe Thomas, the left tackle. And that hurts. And Barry Alvarez watches a big pass play get wiped off the boards right here. Joe Thomas, the big left tackle, and I don't like that call at all. That is not a hold, in my opinion. I thought he was holding up solid, and it looked like a trip to me, not a hold. But any time a defensive lineman goes down like that, I guess that's, that's the feeling, is that it was a takedown, and that's how the officials ruled it. Barry Alvarez, understandably upset. That was a huge play to Williams that was negated. Well, and Joe Thomas... I mean, people are going to go down when they latch up with Joe Thomas. He's six foot eight, goes about 315. Comes pretty close to blocking out the sun. And I thought he was rock solid in protection on that play. So instead of the big game, it goes to second and 17, push back to the 48 of Northwestern. Kosiak, the tight end, in motion. Calhoun slips out of the backfield and Stocko is angry at himself for short hop. Calhoun brings up third and 17. So a third and 17 upcoming for the Badgers. Second and 17, third and 17. These are situations that aren't comfortable situations for Wisconsin. Uh, they're not built for second and long and third and long. And Gary Alvarez knows that he doesn't have much time to work with and it's looking at a 10-point deficit brandon williams is split to the right stocko looking left dumps it down to calhoun and that's not going to get it done on a third and 17 they pick up about six the omnipresent tim mcgargle there along with adam cadella and john stocko and his offensive mates were looking to the sideline. They wanted an opportunity to go for it on 4th and 12 in Northwestern Territory. Barry Alvarez showing a lot of confidence in a defense that's given up 44 points. He's still down 10 points to punt this football away. So the 10-point lead, time ticking away. Marquise Cole has only had one return for five yards today. And Bush isn't going to let him get his hands on this one. Ken Bush is a master at killing the football inside the 20. This one is killed at the 2. That's twice now that he has gotten the ball inside the 5, once on the 1, once on the 2. Bazinet takes over with a long field ahead of him. 
Seven minutes and 28 seconds left to go as Northwestern has taken over on its three after another great DeBush punt. And they're gonna give it up to Tyrell Sutton. True freshman gets it up to around the eight as we get you down to Jimmy Dykes on the field. Pam, I go back to what Brett Bielema, Wisconsin's defensive coordinator, told me before the ball game. He said, my worst fear is Northwestern getting in the rhythm offensively, getting on a schedule. He said again, their favorite run plays and their favorite pass plays are ran out of the same formation. They are unpredictable. And from standing right here, we're watching Northwestern's offense operate the whole second half. That's exactly what has happened to his Wisconsin defense in this ball game, Dave. Well, in the Wisconsin foot business, defenses appeared to be backpedaling in the second half, and I think it is that fast. It's a mix of play calling. And Sutton takes it up to the 12. will be about a yard short of the first down as Dante Sanders makes the stop. And Brett Bazinet's numbers. Impressive to say the least. That's a career high 64 yards of rushing for him. He's got three touchdown passes, and, and the numbers just don't really speak to the way he handles this offense. Well, he's done a lot more than post numbers in this game. And you know, this is where you can finish off a game if you can run the football. Northwestern being careful not to get caught in their own end zone on that first and second down plays. Well, safety makes this a one-score ball game. And on third and one, Sutton gets the first down. Let's head quickly back to Reese Davis. Reese. Great grab by Mines, and that game knotted up at seven apiece as they try to rebound from the loss to... Maryland last week. They have an enigmatic Virginia team, a lot of talent. Bazinet, flag comes down. Looks like we're going to have a hold coming up against Northwestern. Holding. Number 56 on the offense. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Ryan Keenan, the junior from Westlake, Ohio, flag for the hold. Well, the first three downs of this drive, going to the run three consecutive times and picking up the first down. And not, not a lot of yards, but one of the most important sets of downs for Northwestern because it keeps the clock running. Now after this penalty, Pam, I think if I'm Wisconsin, I use some timeouts here. You've got them, you've got Northwestern pinned back in a first and long. Uh, situation. I think you start using your timeouts here in a two-score game. Because remember, they have to score twice. Sutton picking his way just past the 10-yard line. Clock continuing to roll. Wisconsin does have all three of its timeouts remaining. Well, if, if you use timeouts here, you really put the onus on Northwestern to put the ball in the air, potentially stop the clock with incompletions. Barry Alvarez is going to be comfortable to use them later. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a perfect science, but Wisconsin has the Northwestern offense in a disadvantage in terms of field position and down in distance. Second and 14. Bazinet rolls to his left and throws and completes for another first down. Breaking away is Sean Herbert, who gets it all the way out to the 30. That's a 27-yard gain, and of course, most importantly for Northwestern, they hang on to the football, and Bazinet took a lick at the end of that play. Now, that's a backbreaker. If you're Wisconsin's defense, you can't afford to let Northwestern convert on a second and long. And Bazinet again, coming out. How about the confidence in Bazinet to call a pass on that spot of the field, and then Bazinet converts to Herbert. And that goes a long ways towards solving this football game away if Northwestern can continue to take care of the football. Herbert, the junior out of Oxon Hill, Maryland, with that huge first down play. So you give it back to Tyro Sutton, and Sutton breaks free. Sutton all the way to the end zone, and another Northwestern touchdown, 62 yards, and the upset should be sealed. Sutton 
228 yards on the ground. He has three rushing touchdowns. He's also caught a touchdown pass. And this one just shows you the kid's speed. Uh, Tyrell Sutton again makes the first defender miss and watch him pull away from Lamar Watkins. Uh, Sutton's not known for his speed. I mean, he's not a blazer, but he's got great football speed. And if you woke up this morning and tuned in to ESPN's game day, you would have heard Kirk Herbstreet give you Northwestern as his upset special. And Kirk, nice going. You hit this one right on the nose. Tyrell Sutton, a career-high 228 yards rushing. He had 214 in his very first start against Northern Illinois in Game 2. And he just continues to pile up the Northwestern freshman rushing records. And Barry Alvarez has to sit there and just go, how the heck did we just give up a half a hundred points to anybody? This defense has been terrific all season. Well, there are experts that had Wisconsin in the driver's seat with their remaining schedule. But if you give up 51 points on defense to anybody, I don't see you winning the Big Ten Conference. The Northwestern says kicking to Brandon Williams once is plenty. Another short kick from Villarreal as we head back to Reese Davis. Reese. I know Michigan fans have been waiting for Breston to break free, and what a time to do it as they play that game in Ann Arbor. And here, 418 left to go. Northwestern with a huge lead as Brian Calhoun picks up the first down and then is taken out of bounds by Adam Cadella. Well, Wisconsin couldn't ask much more from this offense. I, Stocko continues to impress. He continues to improve. Calhoun's had a great game as well. But look at the total yards. And Wisconsin's going to have to go back to work on defense. You can't win a Big Ten conference. You're giving up north of 600 yards in a Big Ten game. And... You know, the bad, this Badger team, they graduate a lot of talent along the defensive front. They've been unsettled in the secondary, and they've looked like it today. Stocko up top for Brandon Williams. He is locked up, and they're going to get the flag as he was locked up on the sidelines with Deontay Battle. So with 4.05 left, Wisconsin gets the interference call. This Wisconsin defense giving up 658 yards. Pass interference on the defense, number 22. That 15-yard penalty is assessed from the previous spot and an automatic first down. That's solid work by Brandon Williams picking up that penalty against battle down the sidelines. And as a football team, you never give up. 4.05 to go. And Wisconsin's got to hit quickly here, get the ball in the end zone, not use much time. And of course, you're going to have to get a stop and rely on potentially an onside kick, but you're always trying to win, even 17 points down. Stocko up top, Williams again picks up the first down and kills the clock inside the 10. Battle again on the coverage. But Brandon Williams, who had a spectacular game last week, against Indiana, getting into the act here late. And if you're just joining us, he's a terrific return man, but boy, Northwestern's done a great job of keeping the ball out of his hands on special teams at least. Yeah, you know, we've got just short of four minutes on the clock. If Stocko and this offense can punch it in, the Badgers still have three timeouts. This game has not been decided. Stocko, that's a touchdown, Jonathan Orr. And Wisconsin did exactly what they needed to do, and that was strike quickly. Yeah, Northwestern didn't burn a lot of time off the clock on the long touchdown run by Sutton, and Stocko and this offense did what they needed to do to give Barry Alvarez some hope. And Randy Walker a little uncomfortable over on the Northwestern sideline. Saw his team blow a 23-7 lead here against Penn State two weeks ago in their last game. Melhoff again adds the extra point. But Jonathan Orr now three touchdown catches on the day. Well, the Badgers have some work to do on defense, but this throwing game is going to make it real tough on defenses to key the run this season. 
against the Badgers. I mean, Jonathan Orr, that's just a disciplined route to the outside. Stocko, Stocko came into this season not only with Wisconsin fans, but across the Big Ten as really the question mark on the offense. Take a look at Orr's numbers. But Stocko, in the last couple of weeks, Pam, has been really impressive. And throwing the ball on time, being strong in the pocket. Randy Walker, the head coach at Northwestern, told us that he thinks Stocko is flat out underrated. Says he's really improved from last year to this. And he has uh, shown a lot of poison there. Northwestern putting up 51, but 41 points here for Wisconsin. Stocko, 21 for 26 with three touchdown passes, does have the one interception. And Bucky the Badger going to get some, uh, what's it, biceps and stuff developed doing all these push ups here today. Well, and on this kickoff, I think if you're Wisconsin, you know, they may go with an onside kick. But with three timeouts, I think you might want to save the onside kick after your next score. I think you might want to kick deep here and try to stop Northwestern in their own end with the three timeouts. Randy Walker looks like he's going to go the other way. Ball blows off the tee, so we'll have to reset it. And a lot of the, uh, like the Northwestern uh, hands team is up close. I correct myself, Barry Alvarez is choosing to play it the other way, but uh, Herbert and Fillmore among those up in the hands team for Northwestern, and that one is bounced right into the hands of a purple-clad Wildcat as we go back to restate. Thank you, Reese. Meanwhile, here, under four minutes left to go in the 10-point lead for Northwestern, Ross Lane, one of the wide receivers on this team, is the one who grabbed that Paul Standrick onsides kick. And now it's up to Bazinet and Tyrell Sutton to kill the clock. Tyrell Sutton. We already mentioned the end of the Penn State game two weeks ago. This was the biggest play of the game. Fourth and 15 in the fourth quarter. Isaac Smolko, his first catch of the game. And then this Michael Robinson, the Derrick Williams play. And Northwestern up 23 to seven at one point. They lose to Joe Pond Company. And were it not for that play, assuming they hold on to win today, this Northwestern team would be 2-0 in the Big Ten. And, you know, a team probably in the top 25. Well, and that's assuming, again, that they win this football game. We've still got some, some football to be played here. And if Wisconsin can get a stop, they can make things interesting. And, you know, Penn State, you get them fourth and 15, you feel like you really can convert in that situation. You, you not only have the Nittanys on the ropes, you have them line on the ropes and, and they couldn't deliver the knockout blow on defense. A devastating loss, especially going into a bye week. As we look back now at the Big Ten standings, you see Northwestern trying to even up at one apiece and Wisconsin trying to stay unbeaten. There's somebody between Penn State and Ohio State will fall from the ranks of the unbeaten in the conference later on today. That game tonight on ESPN. Wisconsin Trying to get the snap or get the ball back, obviously, as flags fly again. Snap. False start. Number 63 on the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, that's been a tough day for Zach Streif in terms of lining up. And he's had a couple penalties for early movement, a couple holding calls. But you know, all in all, across this offensive front, this team has played big enough to post over 50 points against Wisconsin. With the penalty, push back now, second and 11. Bazinet to Sutton. And another flag. That will be a Northwestern first down pending the penalty. Jonathan Fields, number one, the wide out. Out on the edge. second down. That is exactly what they got. Randy Walker, a guy who doesn't uh, cotton much to mistakes made by his football team. Seeing some crucial uh, mistakes here in what could be 
the game killing drive. Man Fields got caught red handed. And you don't want to make that type of mistake with your offense when you're trying to bleed a clock. Wisconsin has taken the timeout with 3.30. ESPN HD, call your cable operator or satellite provider. ESPN.com. And that game between the Boilermakers and the Hawkeyes takes on some more importance when you consider they both have a loss. And that in some ways is going to be an elimination game. And then you buckle up for that game tonight between Penn State and Ohio State. Can you going to give you a prediction on that one? I think Ohio rather? State's going to be too tough in the end. But when you look at Justin King and Derek Williams, those two wideouts for Penn State and speed, and they're scary on the outside. They never put it past Joe Paterno, especially in front of a home crowd at Penn State. And now second and 16, Wisconsin is down now to only one timeout as Tyrell Sutton is bottled up in the backfield by Joe Monte. And did he lose the football? Yes, he did. So Tyrell Sutton coughs up the ball and Wisconsin gets it back. Well, you give the ball to your true freshman, and he's been error-free the entire season. But you know the Badgers are coming up. They're trying to strip the football. That was DeAndre Levy. Watch him finish off the play. You're going to see number seven come up. He's going to strip just before the tackle. And Wisconsin is alive. And that play will be reviewed. The previous play is being reviewed. The question will be, did his hand hit the ground with the ball in it? Well, and, and Sutton continuing to fight for yards. I think that this play is going to stand. Now Levy comes up, and he just gets a hand on the football before Sutton goes to the turf. I think this is going to be Wisconsin football. And with 3.31 to go on the clock, the Badgers still have a timeout. If they score quickly here, they don't even necessarily have to go with an onside kick. I mean, you score quickly and get a stop against Northwestern, this is why you never quit and you never give up. You do what you have to do to try to win a football game. Wisconsin a couple minutes ago was down 17 points. And looking at that angle, it did indeed look like it will hold up. The ball coming out of his hand before he hit the field. Tyrell Sutton did fumble against Northern Illinois, and Randy Walker hates it when his players fumble. Holding on to the ball is the number one priority, and Tyrell told us that he had to do a lot of up and downs in practice after he fumbled against Northern Illinois. And if this holds up, he's going to have to do some more of it this week. And how about the heart that the Badgers are showing on defense? I mean, they're battered. They've given up over 50 points. Joe Monty made a great play. The, the previous play stands as called on the field. And again, the correct call is made after going upstairs. And Wisconsin still breathing. Down 10, 331 left to go in the game. And they have it on the Northwestern 45. How about the play by Joe Monty? and the strip by Levy. New life for the Badgers. Stocko gets it towards his tight end, Jason Posiak, who is slapped down after a five-yard gain. The Badgers going no huddle status, and if you're Stocko, you want to try to avoid throwing the ball short of the first down stakes. That keeps the clock running. Don't get greedy, but try to go to receivers beyond the first down chains. Again, just the one timeout left for the Badgers, and Brandon Williams catches it, goes out of bounds, stops the clock now with three minutes even left to go. I'll, I'll tell you what, the Badgers are in great position here. They've got the Northwestern defense reeling. Stocko's making it look easy on some of these throws. And, you know, to add insult to injury, he's making these throws to the sidelines. The receivers for the Badgers are getting a lot of open ground out towards the sidelines and stopping the clock. First down for the 21. 
Stocko with time heading towards Williams who lays out and no. The official says he was juggling it as he went down to the ground and Williams argues his case but to no avail. Uh, great effort by Williams and Williams seems to think that he made the grab. Stocko delivering it low into the outside. And that's a play that Williams has to make. I think they may review this one. That looked like a catch. Looked like he kept his hand under the ball, but they play on. Oh, they're not going to play just at the best in time. In the nick of time, and I think this warrants a review. The previous play is being reviewed. Pam, okay, I think they saw enough upstairs here that this call is going to be reversed. You know, Stocko, we talked about Bazinet all afternoon, but Stocko has matched him punch for punch. Well-thrown ball. And Brandon Williams ends up securing this ball with his right arm. He's going to use his left hand to brace the ball. And I think he's got the hand underneath the ball the whole time. The ball did come loose, but when it was loose, it was in between the hand and the jersey. I think it's going to be the Badgers' ball first down inside the 10. He was cradling it, I agree. Here's the call. After review, the previous play stands as called on the field. Second down. Indisputable, I suppose, comes into play, but that looked like a catch from up here. Interesting. You got to call him like you see him. I thought that was a catch. So instead, it's second and 10 with 2.54 left to go. Stocko takes a shot towards the end zone, and he has touchdown number four. Jonathan Orr scores again. And this Wisconsin Badger team is resilient as it gets. Bucky has life. And Estaco is in the zone right now. He delivered that ball to Orr right on the spot, taking advantage of his height. So Tyrell Sutton had the ball stripped away, fumbled it, and Jonathan Orr, four scores. 51 to 48. Let's head back to Reese Davis. All right, Pam, just as soon as you guys are finished with this Big Ten shootout, which we've seen a lot of lately, Lou Holtz, Mark May with me for the College Game Day School Board presented by Acura. Get you up to date on the latest from the Red River rivalry. Also, the battle for the Little Brown Jug, which is going to the wire. And also, look ahead to Penn State and Ohio State tonight. I'm going to tell you how Texas is just physically taking it to Oklahoma on both sides of the ball. And if you want to know why one team wins and another one loses, look at the big plays and the foolish penalties. I was looking at the scoreboard. <laughs> I can look there too, right? I never thought of that. <laughs> College game day scoreboard coming up in a bit. <laughs> Thank you, Reese. It's all about the bottom line, isn't it? 51 to 48 is our bottom line here. And how about 1,165 yards of total offense in this game? Jonathan Orr with four touchdown catches, only the second Wisconsin receiver ever to have four in a game. Lee Evans had five against Michigan State two years ago. Yeah, this is an interesting call here by Alvarez coming up. Do you kick deep with 248? And you got a timeout. Or do you go onside? And again, it's not a perfect science. If you kick deep, now either way, you're going to have to stop Northwestern on downs but you give the ball to Northwestern in pretty good field position he got a lot further to drive if you get the ball back when you opt for the onside kick on the other side of the coin Pam you could always recover the onside kick so you got to figure that in looks like Alvarez is again going to go for the onside and this time it's Melhoff and again it is recovered by Northwestern Melhoff keeping it low to the ground they also had Stanley out there another kicker and with 2.48 left to go, Ross Lane for the second time today, the wide receiver has come up with a big recovery of an onside kick. Well, and you look at the clock here with one timeout, and assuming that Northwestern runs the ball on all three downs, if Wisconsin can get a stop, 
they're going to have plenty of time to come down the field and attempt a field goal or score a touchdown. Well over a minute. The kicker Taylor Melhoff has hit a career-long 46-yard field goal in this game. Sutton, another penalty flag is down and thrown in the direction of the offensive line of Northwestern. And if this is a hold, do you take the penalty because the clock is going to roll if you take the penalty? Holding against Northwestern. Well, the clock is such a factor here, Pam. If you take the penalty, I think they're going to decline it. They're going to decline it because the clock would continue to roll again on first down. Second down. You're right again, David Norrie, because we looked over, and uh, Barry Alvarez waving it off, and they are going to do that. The clock, the most important thing right now for Wisconsin, and it does start to roll now. And Brett Bazinet, the old veteran, going to bleed that play clock as much as he can. Well, it's tough for Northwestern to call pass on second or third down. You throw an incomplete, Wisconsin saves a timeout. Fake pitch, he goes down in the arms of Kurt Ware. Clock continuing to run, 2.15. And Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator for Northwestern, and Randy Walker. Now this is why you earn the big money. You got to make the decision here. Do you put the ball in the air? Because you could always throw an interception, and also you throw an incomplete pass. Wisconsin's going to get the ball back, and they're going to keep their time out. Third and nine. Knowing Randy Walker, I think he trusts his fifth-year senior. I think they're going to try to put the game away and hit a ball beyond the first down chain. Brett Bazinet walks over to take the timeout at the last possible second. Northwestern now down to two timeouts. Wisconsin hanging on to their precious one. Mike Dunbar is the offensive coordinator for Northwestern, now in his fifth season running this offense. Well, in this situation, Dunbar's on the headsets, and he's talking to Randy Walker, but you also bring Bazinet over, and, and you talk to your quarterback about what play is he comfortable with. And you make the decision, are you going to run the ball, are you going to pass it? I think they'll put the ball up here. And you don't want to give the ball back to Wisconsin the way that Stocko and that offense is moving the ball for the Badgers, but you consult Bazinet heavily on what he thinks. And Bazinet all, always has the option, if he doesn't like what he sees down the football field, to pull it down and run for the first down. You trust him not to make that crucial mistake on third down. And even if it is incomplete, you hope that you can get a, a good punt from Ryan Peterson to knock it down. And HD, call your cable operator or satellite provider today. Log on to ESPN.com anytime you want. Here, probably the play of the game, at least for now, at third and nine. And Bazinet is going to run. He will not get the first down, but stays inbounds. The clock keeps running. Jack Ikeguanu coming up to make the stop. And Barry Alvarez worked. These situations inside five minutes masterfully. Charge timeout, Wisconsin. The third and final timeout. He couldn't have drawn it up any better. He saved that timeout for third down, and as we said, well over a minute to work with. Barry Alvarez in his 16th and final season as the head coach at Wisconsin, coming in and taking over a program that was as dormant as they come. And, of course, winning those three Rose Bowls. And, boy, what a way for him to, if he can, you know, come back somehow and win this game, keep that perfect record intact. Well, he leaves a great legacy, and there's no two ways about it. An undefeated season is on the line here. And this team looked down and out. They were down 17 points more than halfway through the fourth quarter. I think this guy can still coach with the very best in, in college football. I mean, my reaction is... Coach, how can you be stepping down? I think he's really at the top of his game still. And, of course, it's always a personal decision. He leaves a great legacy. 3-0 and in Pasadena. And, and Wisconsin's become a major factor in the Big Ten. You go back to the 80s, people didn't think about Badger football. It was a 
huge $100 million renovation at Badger Stadium. Fantastic facilities now. And of course, Alvarez will stay on as the athletic director. Ryan Peterson in, punting. If you're the Badgers, you're looking for a fake here. You want to make sure you don't get caught. On fourth and five, Peterson is going to kick it away from Brandon Williams. And that's about as good as you can expect as it bounces out of bounds. That's an old coffin corner job. Wisconsin takes over at the three. Well, if you're playing on Sundays, you might be worried about the clock here. Yeah, but in college football, the clock stops on first downs. And as long as Stocko can get time, you don't take sacks, and you try to not pick receivers short of the first down markers, a minute 23 is an eternity to get your team in the field goal position. So they get it from the three. Ryan Peterson for the second time today, pinning them back at the three-yard line. John Stocko, a career high, four touchdown passes today, throws from his own end zone, and it's intercepted. And Stocko and company see their comeback attempt fall short. Reggie McPherson with the pick. to get his first career interception. And as Stocko led this comeback, he had most of his success to the outside where you can see the danger, you can see the threats. He gets a little greedy on the first play of this must-have clock drive, and he pays for it. He was looking for Jonathan Orr, and McPherson, you could see, just had a terrific break on the football. And Stocko, what an effort for him today, but they will fall short. He's thrown for well over 300 yards and four touchdowns. A couple of interceptions in that one. And McPherson, Northwestern needed a player to step up and make a play. It didn't look like they were going to stop this Badger team on downs. And Wisconsin was moving the ball at will in the passing game on the last two drives. And Stocko had some great chances down the stretch to pull out a miracle victory. Didn't quite get it done. No timeouts left for Wisconsin. They will take on Minnesota in Minneapolis next week, and their undefeated season is over. Brett Bazinet, our Nexium player of the game, a career-high 64 rushing yards, and also three touchdown passes for the fifth-year senior. Northwestern pulls off the upset beating previously unbeaten Wisconsin 51-48, despite Brian Calhoun going over 100 yards in both receiving and rushing. First time a Wisconsin back has ever done that. So Northwestern takes it 51-48. to This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. We will be back with more shortly from Northwestern after a wild game. Let's first get it back to the much calmer studio. Reese. All right, Pam, glad to have you along. College Game Day School Board presented by Acura. Lou Holtz and Mark May alongside. You know, that is a score that Bill Carmody and Bo Ryan can be proud of, the basketball coaches at Northwestern and Wisconsin. 51-48, Wildcats do it again, reminiscent of a game between these two in 2000 that finished 47-44. Big Ten's a shootout league these days. But let, let's take a step back here, guys, as we've now dropped to 11 unbeaten teams. We'll be down to single digits by the end of the day. We have a couple of battles of unbeatens coming up a little later. As you look ahead now at the Penn State Ohio State game, Penn State goes into Ryan Field. They are able to get a win against this high powered Northwestern team. Wisconsin couldn't do it. They were unbeaten coming in. Does it change the way you look at it, or is it too dangerous to daisy chain games together? It's always dangerous to daisy chain, but the way that I look at these games, there are only two teams that can play defense and solid defense in the entire conference, and both of those teams play tonight. And come back for the scoreboard show because we'll tell you about them later. That's Penn State and Ohio State. All right, Coach, I want to hear what you have to say about this game in just a minute. But Jimmy Dykes working the sidelines for us at Ryan Field, the Northwestern Wisconsin game. Wildcats come out with a victory. Jimmy, you're a basketball guy. You had to like that kind of scoring. 
Well, you got to always like what a coach does in the locker room, Reese. So I got to ask you, Coach, what adjustment did you make in the second half offensively to get on a roll like you did? I just told Baz to start getting them going. You know, uh, no, we we felt like we had stuff all day. We we felt like there were things in our offense that we that, that we could do and, and make plays. I got to give a lot of credit to Brett Baz and he came out and got on fire and, and held our football team together. We knew it was going to be a game like today, and as I said off the air, we make it interesting. And, and but I really like the way our kids had their poise. They just kept playing, and, and it was great to finish a game today. Your young freshman, Tyrell Sutton, fumbled that ball and actually let Wisconsin back in this thing. What did you tell him after that? I did not talk to him. Uh, it, it, was, it was his best interest that we didn't visit. But, he, you know, that happens. I think he was just trying too hard. I don't think he, as an immature player doesn't know the situation. It wasn't about gaining yards. He was just trying to get yards. I want to talk to a mature player real quick, Brett. <laughs> what were you seeing defensively out there in the second half? A lot of man-to-man, -man. Uh, like, like we thought going into it, they were going to try to man our guys up, and, and they thought they could out-physical us. And our old line played great. You know, my hat's off to the receivers. They obviously went and won, and when you get them the ball, they make some plays. We talked upstairs during the ball game that you look like you're in a zone. What's it like to be in a zone in your home field against a top 25 team? You know, it, it's great. It, it's a tribute to the team, obviously. You know, nothing happens without those guys up front. Zach played great, and the wide receivers really came to play, like I said. And, you know, Tyrell and I were joking around. We needed to have big games, and, you know, he sure did. And I'm, I'm just so happy about our team. All right, man, congratulations. Thanks you very Pam, much. Pam, let's go back up to you. Thank you, Jimmy. A fabulous game there for Brett Bazinet as uh, they are able to upset Wisconsin in one of the best offensive displays you're ever going to want to see. Uh, Brett Bazinet, there are not a lot of teams if they face Bazinet and he plays at this level, uh, it, it's going to be tough to stop Northwestern. And this score is going to get the attention of a lot of defensive coordinators across the league. Bazinet, a career day. We said he had to have one of his better days. I think he had his best day as a Wildcat. And we will have them next week at Purdue. We've got to put in two. Tim McGargle, how about a career-high 25 tackles for him today? Wow. Northwestern beats Wisconsin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up next, it's College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Time now to go to Reese Davis in our ESPN College Football Studio.